this movie was written through a pitch session for other movies. Ah, Vin yes. Diesel was in the room pretending to be a chair. And everyone was like, <laughs> that beanbag chair looks totally normal for a beanbag chair. They were pitching other movies. They were like, here's a buddy comedy movie. Here's a road movie between a father and son. Here's a prison break movie. And at the end of it, Vin Diesel stood up and he was like, you're hired. <laughs> <laughs> That's the only way that I can. That sounds perfect. accurate. I can agree to this. Okay. God awful movie. 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 Welcome back to God Awful Movies, where each week we watch another terrible movie so you don't have to, except for those times when we find a cinematic masterpiece. I'm your host, Heath Enright, and I'm joined by a member of my family, Eli Bosnick. Eli, family. Heath, family. 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 And we also have two other members of the Gamily. I'm really happy about that. We're calling it the Gamily. Back by very popular demand. We have two veteran masochists, Rachel and Moishi. Our train, Mo Dog, welcome back. Thank you for having us. Gamelia. <laughs> I'm having a terrible time. <laughs> so, podcast listener, you're going to be like, how does this uh, podcast go off the reins so quickly? We were like, oh, you know what we'll do? We'll rent a studio and put Rachel, Moishi, and Eli in it together for ease of use. It has been 21 minutes of trying to set up and use. Ha microphone. So <laughs> buckle in, everybody. <laughs> so that's all happening. I'm watching it on video. It's terrifying. It's terrifying. Moishi all cannot right. stop texting. He thinks he's fooling me. He's by my notes. <laughs> yes, but you're obviously texting and then switching. You back don't need to, your to type notes. new things into your notes now, right? You would just read them. What are you taking? Taking new notes on the movie you didn't see? I was texting you asking. Did what he you're not doing watch later. it? <laughs> oh, right. He was high. He was high. I believe we all watched it. Rachel, tell us what we watched. What are we going to be breaking down today? We watched Fast X. It's the story of a ragtag group of actors who have never spoken the English language and are doing the same movie for the 10th time, 11th time. Yeah. Plus a little bit if you count Hobbs and Shaw. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. And Moishi, how bad was this movie? This movie... I didn't write something for this. I was really high and I saw it at 1030 <laughs> last night because it just fucking came out. It was so bad. It was so bad that I wish, I wish they'd stay dead. I wish <laughs> they, they're immortal. I understand that. And I wish they weren't. We learned in the last one. They're actually immortal. They cannot die. Can't die. Well, I, I love this movie. I love all of these movies. Eli, how amazing was this movie? Well, if you like the Fast and the Furious movies, but you wish the movies included more pop quizzes about previous cast members. <laughs> you will love this, mo this movie. This entire movie. This yeah. is <laughs> indecipherably self-referential. <laughs> we have seen all these movies and multiple times all of our notes are, I don't know who that is. They're from seven movies ago. <laughs> this is reading a program's code starting a hundred lines in the movie. Yeah. I thought Jason Momoa was going to be Vin Diesel's brother for three quarters of the movie before I remembered that was John Cena. Right. That the was last John last Cena movie. Yeah. is yeah. Vin Diesel's I, brother. I, yeah. I, well, I got that now. <laughs> I like that they just complete. We'll talk about it when we get to the review. I like that they completely revamped John Cena's character from the last movie yep. from bad guy and infamous like international villain to like. John Cena. You know John Cena, like the wrestler turned comedic actor. Yep. He's here now. Jonathan Cena. Yeah. And is there anything you'd like to nominate this one for being the best at being the worst at? My best worst is very clear Vin Diesel voiceovers. Yeah. There's a lot of times where his voice seems a little disconnected. And I realize I forgot he can't speak English. So they probably just had to cut in voiceovers at a at a bunch of parts in the movie yeah, and they did no, a really bad job of that it's they must have found like monk throat singing to, <laughs> to synchronize <laughs> yes he has gone from christopher nolan batman voice to like some kind of summoning of cthulhu yeah in, in, like, it's, it's go, go, go. It's he, he's like he's like all the way so that's slow now i feel like yeah it's slowed down it's sad yeah, it's really it's, you know like the first time grandma doesn't quite recognize you yep that's where he is vin's acting has gotten yes <laughs> All right. I was going to go with a couple of best 
bests because I love this. First of all, best best, Jason Momoa wardrobe. Oh my God, yes. He Fire. changes into Fire. something new and amazing every single new scene and it's fantastic. I want all of it. He looks beautiful and he steals the movie. He's perfect. Uh, 100%. Absolutely. This Amazing. was Jason Momoa, the movie. Yeah. By, let's just clarify, and we'll talk about it, obviously. By the end of this movie, you are actively rooting for Jason Momoa to kill Vin Diesel and all of his friends and yes. family. So a lot of people who listen to the podcast may not know that our dear friend Rachel here is a former professional fashion designer. So I made a list of all of Jason Momoa's outfits in the movie. <gasps> and Fantastic. I... As we go through this with like Rachel to hot or not it. Ooh, Ooh I beautiful. love that. Yeah, I made is, an okay. I made an index. This is why I didn't have a best worst ready. I was <laughs> making a I was making a Momoa fashion. Man, ADD index. is a powerful drug, my guy. Really no, it's more powerful than drug the edible I took while watching the movie. That'll do it. Fun behind the scenes fact about Jason Momoa's outfits. So you notice that they all run along like a similar cut. Yeah. And that is because he saw a woman the day he did this like screen reading for this movie wearing a similar outfit and they were like well obviously we'd like to offer you the part and he was like only if you make me a men's version of this suit and they were like fucking what <laughs> and he was like I want to wear a men's version of this particular suit in every scene in different colors can I be honest Good for him. Good for it, right? Good for him. He pulled it off. It made the character fun. That was a choice. I loved it. Yeah. It's the highest grossing film series in the world right now. There's no thing he could have said that they would have been like, yeah, man, this movie's going to make a billion yeah. dollars. Doesn't matter. Yeah. Yeah. Whatever you want. You want us to go hunt that woman down and kill her <laughs> so you're the only one in that outfit? We'll buy all of them and burn everyone but yours. I'm going to add one more, by the way. Ooh. Best, best. This is a Christian fucking movie. Christian film. Oh my, oh my God. I, that's like in my notes all too. the way. This is full of Christianity. Have they always been this Christian? No. No, they've been building to it. Yeah. Okay. No. They feature this cross throughout. This is, I think this is the most Christian movie we've ever done. Absolutely. Several times characters will be like, wait a second. Everyone stop talking. Faith. And then yep. they all just stare at it. Jesus Christ. Yeah. What's great is this is such a popular franchise that they couldn't afford to be remotely denominational. So yep. they just all stare at that cross and they're like, so we all agree what this means to us, right? But we're not going to say, say it out it, loud. Yeah. We don't want to <laughs> lose any tiny segment of this market. So we're all just going to agree. Jesus. Faith. <laughs> this guy. <laughs> yeah. All right. And I'm going to take the easy one. I'm going to go with best worst reasons for fighting. Were there any? By my count. There are four separate times in this movie when characters go, would you like to have a fist fight right now? I think it would be good for the movie. And the other character goes, yeah, no, we can have a fist fight at this point. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, sure. <laughs> I've got one. I would like to nominate this film for absolute best worst henchman. Because as I look back on the movie, I realize that you can tell quite literally instantaneously in this film whether someone's going to be good or at fighting or not based on whether they have a mask on. Yep. And if they yeah. have a mask on, I cannot stress this enough, they turn into a fucking putty patrol from Power Rangers. <laughs> no. They like they just they just sort of flail their arms at Michelle Rodriguez and she just body slams seven dudes in a row yep. to their death. The fighting is crazy in this If you movie. have a commando mask, you're a Koopa Troopa yeah. in this entire are, series. Yep. Yeah. The variety Honor. of fight choreography, right? Because for some reason, everyone gets a fight in this movie. Yep. There was sexy fighting. There was mm -hmm. sloppy fighting. There was <laughs> dance fighting. There was. Vin Diesel <laughs> gently hugged three stuntmen and yep. they sped it up. At one point, <laughs> at one point, one of the like CIA guys who's like all clad in body armor, so you know he's not gonna be able to fight well, grabs Michelle Rodriguez and she just bites his arm through yep. four layers of Kevlar yeah. and he dies. I saw he that. Just, he I saw that too. He's just he like, explodes. oh, you got me. My <laughs> arm injury. Now, to be Flies fair, off the road. Michelle Rodriguez does have rabies. <laughs> <laughs> the silent killer. Okay. <laughs> Is it a silent killer? Oh, yeah. It's pretty loud. Mm -mm. This is the foaming and hissing. And anyway. Not the way I do it. <laughs> that's canon now about the Letty character. I'd like to nominate for one more. 
Can I nominate for one Can more? Can we move no, on? We have no, to We're done. Such a good one. Jason? Fine. All right, fine. But if it's bad- No, I'm done. I'm we're telling done. one of your secrets on air. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Do deal. it anyways. Like do Jason, it. which right. you just said? Yep. Yeah. <laughs> Jason had to-, to get out of a car the other day because he had to shit so bad. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, no, that, could, that could have been a Fast Furious scene. I would have died rolled out of an Uber with Rachel because I had to take a shit. He did. This is true. He didn't even get a chance to tell the joke. To what is your Uber rating, Jason? We don't have to talk about things like Can we that. move on, please? All right, ready? Best worst Punnett Square. Because not one person in Vin Diesel's family in this movie is the same goddamn ethnicity. That is, that is great. To be clear, yes, this is a great point. Punnett Square, like Gregor Mendel? Is yep. that a Gregor Mendel reference? Isn't it? No, isn't that what it's called? The yeah, genetics absolutely. thing of Punnett yeah. Square? Yeah. It looks like M.C. Escher drew the Punnett Square for this family tree. Like, <laughs> it's, it's fucking Because the family tree is their mother is Rita Moreno. <laughs> Rita Moreno. West Side Story. Tree. Vin yeah. Diesel is in the middle. John Cena is a brother. white brother. John Cena and is on one side. His son is black. And his son is an African American. Also, his son's mother, I forgot, is like a blonde. She's, lady. Brazil- she's white passing Brazilian. She's I think, white passing the- Brazilian. Yes. <laughs> and so together they had Shirley's their own. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, I think we're going to need a minute to like put that Punnett Square all together in our heads. And then we'll be back to tell you all about Fast 10. All right, everybody. It's time to read 10 Fast Furious movies. So, like, what do you guys think? What are we doing? I mean, we've made 10 movies. Um, 11 if you count Hobbs and Shaw. Yeah, we're kind of out of plots. Out of plots? That's not possible. What about, like, a bank robbery? Five. Uh, jailbreak? Oh, six. six. All right, uh, fucking... Out of space. That was the last one, Vin. We made that like two years ago. Evil brother. We'll do evil brother. Also the last one. Come on. All right. Uh, what, what if one of the bad guys from the old movies like, had a brother? Yep. We did that too. Uh, had a mother. Did it. Son. Uh, no. A son. No, we have not done the son of a previous bad guy yet. No. Nice. All right. All right. So what does, what does he do? Like, Goes after the family, right? Yeah, that's literally the plot of the last six movies. You know. Oh, oh, oh idea. What? What? I- I'm just saying, but at this point, we have enough characters that if John just walked into a room and said, like, a very basic hello to everyone, I mean, that could be two hours. Okay, you want to make a movie about some bad guy? What, what, all we do is introduce characters. Purely, yes. Can we pretend Paul is alive? Sure, Vin. We can pretend Paul is alive. He's my best friend. Yeah, man. We know. Family. This episode is sponsored by BetterHelp. Hi, I'm Rachel Wax. And I'm Moishi. And I'm Eli Bosnick. You know, as people born Jewish, Rachel, Moishi, and myself were assigned therapists at birth in a secret midnight ceremony. But if you weren't born Jewish, you might be struggling to find a therapist. And that's why there's BetterHelp Online Therapy. BetterHelp is entirely online, designed to be convenient, flexible, and suited to your schedule. Just fill out a brief questionnaire to get matched with a licensed therapist and switch therapists at any time for no additional charge. Find more balance with BetterHelp. Visit BetterHelp.com awful today to get 10% off your first month. That's BetterHelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash awful. Okay, did... Do you guys actually get therapists in a secret midnight ceremony? I yeah, man. Yes. Totally. Uh, yeah. I knew yeah. it. And we're back. And we're going to start with a production logo for their company called One Race, which is <laughs> really not a good start. Yeah. And we're going to get the gist here, which is that Aquaman's dad, I will never call Jason Momoa anything but Aquaman throughout my notes. Okay, uh, sure. So Jason Momoa's dad is the bad guy from movie five. Reyes. Yes, and we are now inserting Jason Momoa into the Fast and the Furious timeline starting at movie five. So I would like to admit something here. Every time I watch one of these movies, I forget about it the next day because otherwise I'd have to end my life. Sure. And so when they started playing the scene from season from from movie five, (laughs) I didn't know that it was from movie five or remember. (laughs) 
<laughs> so I just saw Jason Momoa and I was just like, okay, I guess, I don't know. I guess they're just opening the movie with a bank heist. Like, yeah, yeah. I didn't have a, I didn't have a goddamn clue who any single person nope. in that scene was. Yeah. Not a, not for a million dollars. For all the money in that vault, I couldn't have told you what was happening. Yeah. No. So what I love about the implication of this though, is that it means that every single random car crash and explosion from all 10 of the movies, right? Every random person who was in any of those cars could come back as an A-list actor. Waiting yeah. to be a sequel or a <laughs> right. sequel. Yes, thank you. Every Lashy. random thug, every driver, every passenger. <laughs> yep. And as we'll learn later in the movie, every random extra from previous movies could also be a character Vin right. Diesel <laughs> yes. cares deeply about. Absolutely. Okay, so the general idea, though, is that evil goatee Jace Momoa is the son of Reyes. We're watching number five. He was there, apparently, like just out of the frame for that whole movie. Yes, he was just <laughs> off to the like, side. Number five was a little too fast for him. Fine. He's in this one, and he's being told by dad, like, you have to go get Vin Diesel and his crew. Now that's the plot of this one. Yes. I got to say, Jason Momoa, from the start, he looks Fucking amazing. Thank you. Oh my you br God. brought me exactly to my point. He looks like a pirate sex worker in this one. Yeah. yeah, you brought me exactly to my point, which is that he is dressed like I have a sugar plantation themed stripper for this <laughs> first scene. Yeah. Moishi, do you have what outfit exactly he's wearing? Oh, in the first scene? Yes. I don't think in the first scene, because I think I started it quite literally in his next scene. The first one I've got is Burning Man Assassin, which I, as Ooh, I believe, I love that is the next scene. He shows up in the, that's when he shows up in the lair. Yeah, uh, yep. okay. that was good. That was a winner. The idea didn't occur to me yet to, to keep track of the outfits at this point. I didn't know how great they'd be. Understandable. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> so back in the present, we watched, we watched Fast and the Furious 5 because it's been five movies. Why not reuse that footage? <laughs> So now we're back in the present and we're watching a car do donuts in a parking lot. We, we think that might be Vin Diesel's car, but then we zoom in. What? It's his son. So Vin Diesel is teaching his 11-year-old kid. Max. Not. He is 11 because they said it later. Oh, they oh say, he's okay. about to turn yeah. 12. Yeah. Oh, I thought Eli was like, he reminds me of my dad. I thought, no, I I thought Eli was. <laughs> to do donuts in the room. I thought Eli was telling Rachel, refer to him as, as Max. Max. Please refer to him by my son's name <laughs> so on the air. He's teaching his son not how to drive safely, not how to use a turn signal, not how to parallel park. He is teaching his 11-year-old son how to drive like a psychopath on the run. Right. Mm -hmm. Like the way you do before you die in a hail of gunfire from police officers. That's what they're practicing. But they end the little driving lesson and the kid's disappointed because he didn't donut correctly? I have no idea. Okay. Somehow he jumped without a ramp. It was impressive. <laughs> he was doing like non-Euclidean shit in this scene. That was fun. Yeah. So that's that scene. And it's been five minutes in a fa Fast and the Furious movie, which means it's time for a barbecue. It's time for family. Yeah. Family. Exactly. So I'd like to introduce what my experience was. I had decided, so I brought an edible to this movie and I decided I was going to take a nibble of it every time they said the word family. Oh no. <laughs> that, no edible was gone. Drug game. that edible was gone by the end of the barbecue. <laughs> <laughs> so on, the, on quite literally the fourth family. <laughs> when we do Fast 11, that is the game. When oh, we record no. this. You'll, we'll kill I'll be Moishi. in the hospital. Yeah. yeah. So Rachel will go back in time somehow and be a, <laughs> her own great grandmother. <laughs> Absolutely. So this movie tried to go really hard on the emotional stuff right off the bat. Like they were really trying to dig in. The problem is that these actors have now done the same movie 11 times. Mm -hmm. So they can't muster up a tear, a smile, <laughs> a fuck. Nothing. nothing. They were literally just no. like, you are my greatest. Blah, 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 blah. Uh, yeah. Okay. Oh, they're Family. also all like 58 now. So like that's, they're living on fucking nitrous and Botox. Yeah, that's like, what, that's I what wrote. powers this film. <laughs> Rita Moreno stands up to give this like, I can't believe we've made it all these years together speech. But it really feels like it's about, I can't believe how many of these fucking movies yes. we've made. She's like, you're almost 50. I'm like a hundred. She's like 180. She's talking I mean, about Natalie Wood from her 1961 movie they did together. Christopher Reeves killed Natalie Wood on a boat. <laughs> Walking, not Reeves. Vin Diesel is 55. Also, she is wearing, I'm going to say conservatively, 50 gold Christian crosses at least, on at body. least. Like a belt buckle that's a, a gold cross. It's crazy. 
You ever look under a microscope and you see a creature that's capable of dividing asexually and then it does one little bud comes off? Yeah. That's what it feels like happened with Rita Moreno and Vin Diesel. His one cross was actually a <laughs> yes. bud that grew into a Vin Diesel. <laughs> Absolutely. And the Charizard version of him will have several hundred crosses yes. like Rita Moreno. They also, in order to tug at our heartstrings, they showed all these like little little cute little photos pasted on the wall of from past movies from past movies and a lot of them are like a candid of Vin Diesel and Paul Walker laughing together in a car <laughs> while driving and I'm sitting here like who is taking these photos that who is their Instagram <laughs> husband that Great. problem gets significantly worse later in the film but what I what I found who is their Josh J what I, what I, I, I picture a selfie funny. stick scenario where they're just having fun so what I found more perplexing about this is that they treat Paul Walker, Paul Walker's character, so much in this movie like he's dead that I forgot he's not dead in the movie, right? Because like this entire scene oh in the garage- Oh my God, he's not? No, no, he's on a beach. He's, he's, he's like he lives to be in, in the movie. Belize or something. Yeah. What? And Twice. so from everybody else's perspective, Vin Diesel is just way too fucking like mournful and attached to his friend who moved. Who is like, fine. Yeah. Who is Who he sees all the time. <laughs> like because. There's two scenes in the movie where he's like, I just checked on Brian and Mima. They're fine. He's not dead. Yeah, so there's <laughs> he's alive. <laughs> there's a scene in the garage, right, where Vin's got, a fuck, Dom's got like a fucking vision board of just like photos of Paul Walker. And he just like gently touches one of them. And if Yeah, I'm, that's why I thought maybe he right, died. But if I'm anybody else in the movie, if I'm any of the other characters, I think him and Dom were fucking, right? Like there's right. no, because it's- They like, might have been. Yeah. We don't know that, Jason. You know what? That's fair. You're slut shaming. Dom's just like, bring, hello, Paul Walker. Okay, bye. Cool. Yeah. He answered the phone because of how not dead he is. <laughs> And then the only other thing we learned from this scene is that Roman, he's the comic relief, who has <laughs> Tyrese, total class clown, who yeah. has really lost his sense of humor for this one. But don't worry, sure has. the mo movie won't acknowledge it. <laughs> it's like, OK, the only way I could say it is like you ever watch a couple get into a big, messy fight and then everyone decides to go to the movie anyway. That's how Tyrese Gibson's character is in this film yes. is like he the first day he was like, I'm not the fucking comic relief anymore. And everyone was like, OK, we'll just read the script and pretend he's, it's just normal. <laughs> we'll just do it normal. But anyways, Roman, yeah, that character, he's going to be in charge of the big thing they have coming up in Rome. So that's that's that he's in charge. And so that night, Dom is giving his son a little pep talk about how someday he'll be just as Vin Diesel as he is. As he is Vin as he Diesel. Is. <laughs> we made you like an amoeba. It's so cool how we could do this. And this is where him and Letty, Michelle Rodriguez, have, I guess, approaching a sex scene. I feel like, this is what I feel. Yeah. In my heart. I don't think he makes semen anymore. This is my thought, is that they <laughs> is the penis. <laughs> <laughs> they choreographed a sex scene. It's a yeah. And then Michelle Rodriguez was like, his body no longer resembles a human enough <laughs> that we can simulate sex. And Vin Diesel was like, see you, Paul Walker. And so what, <laughs> what happens is they smooch. And then he's like, are you pregnant? Which absolutely makes it seem like Vin Diesel thinks you can get pregnant from kissing. And she's like, no, man, I'm not pregnant. And he's like, well, then what was the purpose of this scene? And she's like, I don't know. And then the scene is over. So there was one sentence in this scene that I wrote down because I'm pretty sure Jet chat GPT wrote it. Mm -hmm. Vin says... Vin is worried about something. Go fuck yourself. And Michelle Rodriguez says, if you keep your eyes on the rear view, you miss eternity in this moment. And yeah. then they both look at a cross. Yep. They both look at a cross. <laughs> they look at a cross for a second. And I yelled out, chat GPT, yes. Yeah. But the movie's as bored as we are. So it's time for the plot to literally arrive at their home. <laughs> Charlize Theron is here. She's covered in blood. I assume... From killing her dad. She didn't kill her dad. She killed her, kill dad. her dad. She nope. murdered her father. Google it. Yeah, Google it. Why? Google it. To me, this was already <laughs> too many characters. Yes. I'm already like, what is she doing back here? And she comes back and she's somehow, she's still a bad guy, but she's not really a bad guy, but she's also against the other bad guy. I don't know who's a bad guy anymore. I need a flow chart. Absolutely. Let's be clear. <laughs> For those who haven't been following the fast verse with the sexual furiousness that we here on the God of the Movies <laughs> podcast have been. I watched all 11 movies this week. So. Yes. This is Reich, 
right? W-R-I-K-E. She's a hacker. And one movie ago... Cypher. I thought, oh, her hacker name is Cypher. Yes. Yes. Cypher. Cypher. And one movie ago, she shot Vin Diesel's wife, the mother of his child, in the head. In the head. To death. Elena. Yes. So not his wife. Not no, no. his girlfriend. Oh, that's right. Because Michelle isn't Rodriguez it the kid's the, mom? No, Elena was the cop who helped in Brazil in number five. Isn't that the kid's mom that he? Yeah. Isn't that the baby mama? Yes, it's the baby mama. Oh, Charlize Theron killed her. Charlize Theron killed her one movie ago. It was just in the last one, or like? No, in the last one. Huh. Which means I don't that she is that. now showing up. She is now showing up at their house. I'm gonna say. Six months later? Yeah. To be like, hey, Jason Momoa just beat me up. Are we friends now? And their answer is yes. And they are friends, I think. Yes. Yeah. I love that yeah. she's like, I met the devil tonight. And then he's just the most flamboyant fucking. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And then it's Jason Momoa in a silk in a scrunchie. Blouse. In a scrunchie at one point. Looking like a psychic pilgrim coming into her henchman lair and taking the eye of God thing. Yes. The eye of God is the device that's like, the agency is this international thing. They're kind of like Shield in Marvel, right? Mm -hmm. They like. I think it's above... just the CIA. I think they've they've mentioned it as the CIA. It, they're basically the CIA, but they're like a, they don't have rules. They don't even have like the U.S. government trying to even rein them in. I think they're just like a step above that. And, and they have this device that makes them sort of evil. They can see everything. They're spying on everybody. Right. right. So we we flash back within this scene to watch Jason Momoa take over Charlize Theron's henchman. And his plan that he reveals to her is that he has kidnapped the friend or family of every mm -hmm. single one oh, of Charlize so the Rowan's henchman's family. Yes. Right? And has them all simultaneously FaceTime all the henchmen, all of whom have their ringers on. Yep. And Super he's unprofessional, like, by the way. Thank you. Yeah. And he's <laughs> I had like, that thought too. I have your families. <laughs> You're my henchman now. Okay, can I can I just take a second because something occurred I'm to me about so this. I'm learning so much about this movie. This know, is right? yeah. my <laughs> absolute favorite thing about the movie and I'm going to tell you why. So you've got to remember the reason that he has to kidnap all of Sher uh, Charlie Sharon's <laughs> fucking henchman's kids is because he has no money left, right? Because in the whatever the fucking Fast Five movie, right? That's why he's oh, mad at Vin Diesel because the they money. took all his family's money. So the only way he can get henchmen is if he kidnaps all of her henchman's kids, right? And then calls them and is like, you're now my henchman. But here's the thing. The only way that he could have done that is if he has other henchmen kidnapping them, right? Yeah. Like clearly he has other henchmen. But if he couldn't afford those henchmen, <laughs> there's only one possible explanation, which is he also kidnapped all of those henchmen's kids. It's an infinite regression. So it's just kids I, all the way down. I gotta be honest. Yeah. If someone stole all of my family's money, I would also burn Rome to the ground there you and go. steal a bunch of henchmen. Yeah. Like I am on his side. Right, yeah. It's just a Ponzi scheme of henchmen. <laughs> He's got hundreds of thousands of henchmen just kidnapping each I don't each know what you're confused children. about. That's, that yeah. sounds correct to me. So he he assigns them to kill Charlize Theron. Does not oversee the work. Sloppy. Can I say Super that? Super sloppy. Does not yeah. oversee the work. Luckily, Charlize Theron has a all my henchmen's guns don't work anymore button yep. on her way. And I love that all the guys are like, oh, that's what that does. Oh, okay. <laughs> I always wondered why she wore that thing. I thought maybe she was diabetic and like didn't want to talk about <laughs> She literally just presses a button and all their guns turn off. Yeah. Right. So they, they have a big fight. She jumps in a an elevator, which goes down. Oh, yeah. That elevator At a million fight miles scene. an hour. Okay. This was a good move, though. So she's in the elevator. She's beaten up like the last henchman before she can escape. Mm -hmm. Elevator is falling. Not like normal elevator going down. It's like cut the wires it's falling yeah the wire was cut and she does i she does what i thought until very recently in my life is a real thing that you could do she just jumps up a little bit at the it's last second it's a classic jape and but she well she, they combine two idiot assumptions yeah. about elevators here one the jump a little bit and two the if you're on top of a long fall you're fine what? Because at the last minute, she... Yeah, she lands on the bad guy. Swooshes around and the bad guy's below her and he's dead and she is stumbly to Vin Diesel's house levels of fine. Yeah, that I was confused by that. All right. I remember telling my parents about that once and they were like, that's not 
I don't think you can do that. And I was like, I'm not impressed with adults right now. because <laughs> I asked the science teacher once, same answer. I didn't believe in science for a while. But the point of the matter is the new villain has been introduced. And so now the CIA is back at the house to move the plot forward. And if you want to know how lazy they are about this, it is literally two sentences. They go, yeah, we just loaded Charlize Theron into the ambulance. Don't worry about it. But your friends are in Rome and we actually didn't give them that assignment. So you should probably go to Rome. Yeah, I have. <laughs> I literally couldn't understand how we got to the Rome scene. I was very, I was, I was very confused by this. The only way I can compare this exposition is like, has someone ever been bringing you to a place that sucks and they can't tell you until the very last minute oh, yeah. when it's too when late. yeah, when we go eat at vegan restaurants, exactly. it's that. <laughs> and I'm like, by the way, this is a raw macro vegan restaurant. That's God. what they do with the plot of this movie. And you love to be like, doesn't it taste just like, no, it doesn't taste just like anything. Okay. Well, anyways, we're in Rome <laughs> with the sidekicks. With the sidekicks. The sidekicks, I should point out, for now and for the rest of the movie, are just full on in their own movie. Yes, they are having a separate spinoff. I think they fought for a spinoff and the producers wouldn't give it to them. So they settled on this. They were like, okay, what about a spinoff within the movie? Yeah, and I don't they, think Vin ever talks to Ludacris in this film. Not once. Not, no. not a single Well, attempt. he doesn't really, you know, talk. talk. He can't really <laughs> speak anymore. Don't pass the yeah. Black Dell test. <laughs> okay, hear me out. This just came up for me. Mm -hmm. What if Vin Diesel is dead and in the grand tradition of these movies, they're just not acknowledging it? <laughs> That's he's been, very funny. He's been deep faked for years. <laughs> Vin Diesel's just in our minds. Anyways, they have a plan. Roman has a gold car that he's going to use to shine in the eyes of some guards. It's fucking insane. The hacker girl yeah. from the last movie. This was one of my favorite lazy yeah. writing moments of this film. The hacker girl from the last movie, she conflicts with Charlize Theron's character, who is also a hacker. Yeah. So at the beginning of this scene, she's like, says a car thing and everyone's like, Oh, and yeah, there like, were a lot of moments of like, but you're a woman. Well, it's actually even dumber than that. It, it's you're a woman, but it's also I thought you were a hacker character. And she's like, no, it's Charlie's the run. So I'm, <laughs> I'm a car person now, too. Also <laughs> ridiculous, which brings us to Aquaman's evil plot. Yes. The silliest giant bomb yep. that's ever been constructed. Yes, it is a beach ball. Mm -hmm. It looks like something <laughs> Wiley e. Coyote would have dropped on the Roadrunner. Yeah, it's yes, fucking exactly. crazy. Mm -hmm. And it's just so they're the two hackers are driving a truck. They realize it's in the back. They get out of the truck at some point. I, I lost track. The point is, we now have this giant beach ball, a giant metal beach ball, just merrily rolling through Rome. Through Rome. Yep. Destroying everything in its path, Destroy but no people. <laughs> no people. Not a single person even injured. Yeah, like, and Italians move slowly. Yeah, multiple times throughout I the lived movie. There. Notoriously slow. We'll see like a giant crowd of people perfectly part so that the ball can roll through. If you've ever tried to get cash out of the bank in Italy, you know how slowly they you move. You know that everyone in Italy would be dead right <laughs> <Yes>. now. <laughs> this would have taken out the entire population of Rome. Yes. But no, it, it just rolls around the city. This action sequence is indecipherable. I really He's hitting it with his car at one point. Why are they driving after it? A great question. Okay. Phenomenal I question. Actually, I think I know the answer to this one. According to the movie, Jason Momoa has this bomb plot and he intentionally rolls it out of the back of his truck. So it's rolling through Rome. CIA guy from earlier, a uh, little nobody, which was Mr. Nobody's son, who is now Ugh. part of the agency, whatever. He's a good guy and he's on the radio and he's like, hey, if somebody touches that bomb with their hand. Tag it. I can use the master kill switch to turn off the bomb part of the bomb, but somebody has to be physically touching it. How does that make any sense? It doesn't. It makes okay. no sense. And that's not how they end up deactivating the bomb. No, nope. he Vin Diesel like flies his car into a, what are those called? Crane. Into a crane. And then the crane hits the bomb into the water because they were like, if we get the bomb in the water, it'll be like 10% less destructive. And I guess it was. Yeah. I, that's I mean, <laughs> so there's also this great moment right before that. So Jason Momoa turns to the henchman and he's like, don't go anywhere. Don't forget, I've got your kids. And this is when I had my amazing revelation that he's just kidnapped thousands of henchmen's kids. Correct. Uh, and so yeah. I stopped to write that joke down, <laughs> at which point I looked up from my phone and the bomb was on fire. Now, <laughs> wait, so I want to be clear. Bomb. It hadn't exploded. No, it was just I on was fire. And by the way, right before that happens, Vin goes, it's gonna blow. And then it just <laughs> is on fire, but hasn't it, blown. It's I, just a giant fire. It's literally Vin Diesel in a muscle car 
chasing a fireball through the and streets of Rome. And he's driving up and down flights of stairs. Yeah. Chasing a boulder. And then they're like, and then they're like, Vin, you gotta let it go. You've done everything. And he's like, not everything. <laughs> and then he launches his car, as Rachel said, into the crane and it, it's pinball, right? Like the, it's yeah. like, yeah. I, the only way you can explain it, it's like a, he uses the crane like a pinball lever and just pinballs the bottom yeah. to the river. Into the water. Using the NOS though, because that's the how you win everything. He shoots the Nas thing and ramps himself off the bridge and hits the, the back of the crane and it spins around and pinballs yeah. the giant bomb into the water. I just want to take a moment that if you listening to this podcast are like, I'm a little confused. What does this have to do with Jason Momoa's character? We felt the same way. Jason Momoa just occasionally is on camera like dancing while this happens. <laughs> okay, he, he rigged this whole thing. He's conducting this like a maestro. Yeah. He, he right. kills it in the scene. He also has a... Uh, an Atari joystick he next does. to his yeah. laptop and he's, he's up on a He's controlling some cars, I think. So, and he's running the whole show. Rachel, this outfit is his second outfit. First one was Burning Man Assassin. Okay. That's that's from the Char uh, Charlie Char Charlie Sherazian scene. This is this is his second outfit at this point, which I have titled Crocodile Dun Dick Suck. Oh my God, I love <laughs> Hot this. Hot or it, not. <laughs> it wasn't my favorite favorite of all of them. Okay. Can you describe it to us? It was like, you remember? It was that croc jacket, yeah, like, like, like a little white croc. croc yeah. Yeah. And it was like really, it was cute because it was fitted. It just, I didn't think that it fit the character as well as some of the flowier blouses. Yeah. Agreed. Um, Agreed. I appreciated though the jewelry and the hairstyle that he had with it. Like it was a good overall look. I just don't think it was the best one in the movie. All right. All right. So crocodile done dick suck. Hot. Hot. Yeah. Hot. Okay. Hot for sure. Uh, but not the hottest. All right. So yeah, that's that scene. So now we head to the headquarters of the agency. Which agency? Go fuck yourself. The CIA, according to Heath's notes, I'm not convinced. The anyway, agency. <laughs> it's just the agency. The agency. Anyway, Jack Reacher is the boss now. You know Jack Reacher from Jack Reacher on Amazon Prime. Yeah, what yeah. the fuck? Alan Richson. He's the boss now, and he's meeting with Brie Larson. Who's Brie Larson? Daughter of Mr. Nobody. Go fuck yourself. <laughs> she's no, she's Mr. Nobody's daughter. Even Mr. I got Nobody's that. daughter. It, like okay. an heiress. It's like a title you get, Mr. Nobody. She's like, I'm going to stop you all right now. Everyone Mrs. in the Nobody. movie is like, I didn't know Mr. Nobody had a daughter. And she's just like, neither did any of we. Uh, <laughs> also, and this now. is just my personal opinion. <laughs> I don't think she's a good action movie actor. No. Like she, I've I've seen her in like an Amy Schumer film or like a side comedy, but I'm just like, bitch, go home. Yeah, she doesn't like it. No, She's, but her outfits were lit. On mm -hmm. point. I Googled every single outfit because I was like, need that jacket. Obviously. Need that jacket. Of course. But I just want to clarify here because one scene ago, we met Mr. Nobody's son. And now we're meeting Mr. Nobody's daughter. Wait, what do you mean? We met, Which we one meet? was the son? Mr. The guy son? who was like, tag the bomb and it'll be diffused. Little what? Nobody is his name. I don't know if he's the son or just the like, six, like the veep of Mr. Nobody's job. Okay. There's way too many Nobody adjacent family members in this movie. I, I don't even think it. I think it's just their inside joke to us. Like, who's this guy? Fucking no. Who cares? He's fucking nobody. Yeah. Watch the movie. Eat your fucking yeah. popcorn. Yeah, he's no, like Nick fair. Fury's number two. Now number one, I think. There's also a great news scene in this scene where the, the news comes on and it's like the terrorists have been identified and it's all the pictures of, you know, Dom's family. And I'm just like, how, how many times have these people been on the news as like fucking terrorists? Millions. <laughs> and what I love about this scene is what this scene needs to clarify is we, th we think they're bad guys again. So the, the good, the cops are going to be after them in this movie again. So what they do to explain that is Jack Reacher and I will never call him his character's name because I, I don't, don't know, know it. it. Yeah. It's Ames. Jack Reacher explains why the Fast and the Furious movies are stupid on way too meta a level. Yeah. <laughs> He's like, so they meet these people who are like drug lords and mobsters and murderers. And then they just have a barbecue and everything's fine. That's stupid. And Brie Larson <laughs> is like, we're... We're probably going to end up at a barbecue, man. You got to stop it. <laughs> and he's like, I hate barbecues. It's literally a line in the movie. All right. So now Dom and the family are being chased by, I guess, all the good guys and all the bad guys in the world using the Eye of God device. That is how you build a nuanced plot. Fuck yeah. Act one. <laughs> so we're going to take a quick break and then we'll be back with more Fast 10. Now I'll tell you this. Nothing... It's like family. Like family is family, and nothing is family. Dude, you're late. All is family. I'm sorry, sorry. What did I miss? Just the beginning. Okay, good. 
So you're telling me you're her sister? Wait, who's that? She's the sister of the cop from the fifth movie where The Rock was the bad guy. Oh, so she's the bad guy. No, she turned and joined Vin Diesel, but then the bad guy killed her. Oh, so she's her sister? Yes. Well, if it isn't P315L14W26. What? You, you got to go to the novel, page 315, line 14, word 26. I'll just pause for a minute. When did you guys get novels? They handed them out at the beginning. This, this feels like a lot to keep track of. Shh. We've got no choice. We got to see the one person I want to see the least. So if a train leaves Missoula going 14 miles per hour, it's straight line to Bayonne, it's 236 miles away. And then we got to figure out the math on that. I feel like these movies might not be as accessible as they once were. Shh, we're doing trig. Right, right, sure. It's not trig. <laughs> <laughs> you be quiet, Vin Diesel. <laughs> and we're back. And act two kicks off with Mia and Brian Jr. playing video games at home. <laughs> Ball walkers out getting cigarettes, I guess. And mm -hmm. <laughs> then Jason Momoa's commandos show up to kidnap them. No, no, no these it's are the, the agency. These are the agency commandos, you fool. Are yeah. you sure? Yes. You can tell based on what kind of full face mask they're wearing. <laughs> yes, yeah. I was going to say, you? literally the two different flavors of bad guy are either in black military outfits. Those yeah. are Jason Momoa's people. Sure. Or camo military yep. outfits. Those are the agency. Okay, this is the agency. In case you're wondering, they are quite literally just the terrorists or police outfits from Counter-Strike. Yep, yeah, 100%. It's just, okay. it's just either terrorists or cops from Counter-Strike. I noticed some something really struck me, and this will continue throughout the movie. The child who is 11 mm -hmm. is experiencing so much violence. Oh, he's mm -hmm. so into it, though. He's so calm. He's fine. He's Until so he starts laughing maniacally later in the film. I'm less calm doing my taxes than he was <laughs> watching people smash through his windows and drag his aunt through the kitchen. And then watches John Cena, yeah. the uncle he met zero movies ago, yep. murder those people. Yeah, his white uncle. His white uncle. <laughs> With a giant head. <laughs> this is also the head. first time that... So John Cena shows up and saves them. This is the first time that John Cena isn't in a scene with another giant, like yeah. The Rock or fucking Vin Diesel. And so he's supposed to like shake this child's hand. And it's like... You ever see the... It's like the Iron Giant. It's the Iron Giant! Yeah, but with flesh. <laughs> but just with thick, thick, unspooling flesh. Yes. Anyways, he's like, get in the car. We're doing our own movie. It's a road trip. I'll explain later. <laughs> <laughs> Meanwhile, in... Okay, fucking stay with me here. Podcast listener, I know you're at home. I don't understand the plot. What's going on? Neither do fucking we. Just come on the ride. Meanwhile, in Naples, Italy... Why? Brie Larson is in a dive bar looking for Vin Diesel. And she finds him. But wait, but before instantly. she does, <laughs> she finds him instantly. He's just sitting in a bar. But not just that, everyone in the bar is trying to kill her. This, this is a then, theme throughout the movie. Are those people guarding Vin Diesel? I don't know. Or is Vin Diesel just yeah. in amongst bad people? They're guard. Vin Diesel owns the streets wherever he goes. And Ooh. the streets of Napoli are owned by him now. But then the bartender just hands Brie Larson a gun. A gun? And she's like, pat, pat. And then gives it back and is like, thanks. Can I get two beers? Why? Why anything? Why? But this <laughs> scene, like, honestly, genuinely, I want to sit the writers down and be like, what? who is everyone in this the scene? The only thing in this scene that mattered to me was that Vin and Brie passed along the, the cross necklace. Yes. The Jesus. The faith. Yep. And let me say, look, I wish only good things for Brie Larson. I know she's been through a lot. I think she's very talented. Absolutely, yeah. I did love that she was forced to act in the same scene as Vin Diesel. Yeah. Because <laughs> she's like, the, the agency's after us and we don't have much time. And he's like, uh, Do you give me a Stella? Um, stone. And she's like, what? <laughs> Fuck. Someone call cut. Oh, no. This is all saying in the movie? Okay. Well, Cut, and then the scene's <laughs> over. <laughs> she says more words in this scene than Vin has in his life. Yeah, exactly. So now we're going to cut to the strangest side plot of the movie. I teased it earlier. 
John Cena and Vin Diesel's son are on a road trip together. A very dangerous road trip. A comp, but like a but like a planes, trains, and automobiles. Yeah, it's let's the get best. to know each yeah. other. What's your favorite music road trip? Yeah, yeah. Cena's popping tapes into the tape deck of his car. That's basically my car, which was upsetting. It's supposed to be like yeah. the butt of the joke is that he has a shitty car for this one little moment. Yep. Yeah, and he. This is my favorite part, though. He pops in a tape, and I think it was. Marky Mark and the Funky Bunch. It's Marky Mark and Good the Funky vibrations. Bunch. Yep. Yep. This franchise is perfect. And then him and the kid are dancing. Yeah. Which was really cute. That Sorry. was very cute. That was yeah, very I like their bonding. Let me hit you, Semites, with this theory. Yeah. And Heath, you I were wish excluded. you wouldn't say that. I really wish you wouldn't say that. <laughs> I also didn't like that. Let me hit you with this theory. Let me gas this? you with this, <laughs> with this notion. <laughs> Let me lock us what into this happening? chamber of Zyklon B. I don't like this. Um... <laughs> <laughs> Let your fingernails crawl, crawl along the walls. Also, I don't think Semitic is the right term for the white people I'm looking at right of now. Of this idea. Uh, we are from the desert, Heath, and Thank you can go you. fuck yourself. Oh, uh, Are you? Yeah. Okay. 40 years, baby. 40 years, <laughs> baby. That totally true story. <laughs> Let's go. When our parents die, we get money. Anyway, it's a whole thing. <laughs> so much. Let me hit you with this. This movie was written through a pitch session for other movies. Vin yes. Diesel was in the room pretending to be a chair. And everyone was like, <laughs> that beanbag chair looks totally normal for a beanbag chair. They were pitching other movies. They were like, here's a buddy comedy movie. Here's a rolled movie between a father and son. Here's a prison break movie. And at the end of it, Vin Diesel stood up and he was like, you're hired. <laughs> <laughs> That's the only way that I can. That sounds perfect. accurate. I can agree to this. Okay. <laughs> Speaking of switching movies. Yeah. Now it's time to go to future prison. Where Letty oh, is. Oh, yes, yes. Letty is in this weird, fancy prison. Fancy, a nice prison. A b honestly, cute prison. It's a pretty nice prison. This is Cypher and Letty, right? They're both yes. there? No, they're not both there yet. I'm Spoiler. so No, no. Oh, no, yeah, her... this, is, this is Brie Larson. So Letty's in her cell, which is bigger than my apartment. Significantly. <laughs> yeah, and who comes in? Brie Larson comes in in this, like, gorge Alexander McQueen coat. Phenomenal. Fantastic. Like, no, so chic. She walks in and Letty goes, nice coat. And I was like, yeah. Obviously. It, it is, is a nice, nice coat. It's a really nice coat. I like that the jail is Tetris-based in the yep. way it keeps you in. Mm -hmm. Everything moves in, like, blocks right. out of the way and fits together. It's like an old pyramid scenario. Because if there's the, a problem with jails, I think we can all agree, mm -hmm. it's that all the walls don't move enough. No, I'm right. always saying that. There's not enough mobility in the walls. Of That's the hill I'll die on. But so Brie Larson comes in and she's like, I'm going to break you out because I'm a good guy who's not a bad guy, but some of us are bad guys. And Michelle Rodriguez goes, do you got a plan? And she's like, I got a plan. And then Michelle Rodriguez says the phrase, game recognizes game. And I was like, chat GPT is <laughs> trying <again."> yeah. <laughs> Game rec... Saying but game the, recognizes game to Brie Larson feels like a hate crime. It right? does feel like a hate crime. <laughs> I, I think this is actually too hard on ChatGBT. I feel like it's <laughs> ChatGBT that was only trained on Fast Furious movies. Right? Yeah, of the course. Data, the data said it doesn't have access to the rest of the Fast, <laughs> fast GPT. It just fast feeds GPT. itself back into itself and keeps making yep. movies forever. ChatGBT Furious. Yeah. yeah. But yeah, she says that and then Brie Larson pulls out a knife and stabs her in the shoulder. End of scene. Yep. Don't worry. That will not make sense later. That's going to help Letty escape theoretically, right? It's so mm -hmm. she could get into the medical suite. I was, but I was not spoiling. Oh, uh, that's oh. where the fuck is. Oh, I am. okay. Yeah, it does. That actually does help. No, no, but that that's obvious from the beginning. No, it's not. Yes, it is. It's not obvious from the beginning. I get it. I'm not now. having this fight with you on air. <laughs> okay. I'm tired of fighting with you like this. Guess I was the only one watching. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Anyways, that scene's over, and it's a Fast and the Furious movie, which means we need to be in Rio de Janeiro at a sexy car tushy party. It was so many tushies. <laughs> I I watched this and thought, I gotta get to the gym. I gotta do some squats. I feel, I feel like it's good. I feel like Brazil has a contract with these films. Well, I like, think so too. They're like, we'll let you shoot in Rio de Janeiro for free. We will give you all the tushies. <laughs> you must shoot one tushy for every number the movie is. They were, 
definitely tend to. And let me be very clear here. It's the kind of amount of ass that's no longer sexual. It's, <laughs> disagree. You just, you just Strong remember disagree. That, Thank you. You just remember that everyone is someone's child and you're like, oh, I don't love that. We, we that's have a different that's brains. A, that's yeah. a youth thing. All right, fine. Everyone was really enjoying the open buttholes we <laughs> say in this fucking car Thank racing you. scene. Yes, they were. I All was. right, so here we are in the gaping scene of the fucking movie. <laughs> yep, because it's not Fast and Furious unless there's a big drunk party tushy scene. Right. To racing. I was excited. This is like back to the roots. They're like doing yes. oh, yeah. the first yeah. and this, movie. And again. this scene is so fucking crazy. This is great. Oh my God. So let's, let's take him through it. So Vin comes in. Why is he there? Go fuck yourself. None of your business. I like, he makes the huge entrance like he always does in these. Like Yeah, but he literally came and was like, I'm not here to race. I'm just here to. Yeah, it's, which, they, the they, will, they will race, <laughs> but yes. I was disappointed for a second, but I love how he comes in. It's not a sexual thing for me. I just like to look. <laughs> there's, there's they remind giant, me of my head. <laughs> car, car racing rave happening. And everybody like cheers him because they know who this guy is, which means the like guy who runs these things, these dance party car racing things, tells all the people who Vin Diesel is in case he does, he tries to do a big entrance. So they can all cheer. There's an orientation. Yeah. yeah. There's an orientation. Everyone gets a quick <laughs> slideshow. Paul, still alive. Vin Diesel, very important. <laughs> Much applause for him, please. Um, and he, we also get introduced to two characters here. We'll talk about who the woman is in a minute. Mm -hmm. But all we know from this scene is that she's sassy and she wants to race Vin Diesel. And she's very hot. Were we not and supposed there is to know who she was? some gnarly sexual attraction oh, okay. between her and Vin Diesel. It made yes. me really uncomfortable. It's really uncomfortable. How old is this actress? Do you want me to look it up? No, just in your oh, head. Okay. Raw dog it. Uh... 23. 23, right? 22, yeah. and 23. He's not just old enough to be her father. He's old enough to be her responsible father. Yes. Right? He's old enough to be a father who really <laughs> took his time and had kids when he, he was ready. He had Lenny. a kid on purpose. Right. Yeah. And the idea that she is sexually attracted to him is like if there had been sexual tension in the scene between Vin Diesel and Rita Moreno. <laughs> I'm feeling a little bit attacked yeah, what a, right what now. A weird, a what little... a weird, unique thing that only exists in this movie, Elon. <laughs> <laughs> yep. I just didn't want to call it out. It's fine. I want Vin Diesel in West Side Story now. What I love about this scene, though, is that before the drag race <laughs> starts, yeah. right, he gets confronted by Momoa, right? Like oh, yeah. Momoa shows so Jason up in Momoa this shows scene. up dressed like Aladdin. Yes. yes. Uh, what right? I call, hold on. Wait, wait, wait. Let's see what we called this one. Literally, Genie from a Lamp is in my notes. He is dressed exactly like that. Oh, I yeah. called I called this one Chiquita Bandana. Ah, uh, yes. Because uh, he's, it's, it's fucking, it, there's a lot happening here. Rachel, would you please describe the look and give us a hot or not? I don't remember it. <laughs> this has been a really fun game for me. She yes. said like a lot. I'm sorry. I thought you, first of all, you started this game. You should have described the outfit. You, you should have either outfits, taken man. a photo. I think this is the or first just... one where he's got the top knot. This is the first time we see him with yeah. like the full little man bun top knot. Yeah. And he's back to like the flowy stuff. He's it's back in like the lavender. flowy outfit. He's it's in really like Aladdin silky heavy. lavender. I said what I thought. It was like Aladdin. But what I love about this scene is they have this, there's a crowd of like a hundred Brazilians. And then Momoa confronts Dom. And they just start like rehashing the entire plot. Mm -hmm. Yes. As, as as he starts to explain why he hates him and what he's gonna do to them. Meanwhile, a hundred Brazilians just quietly watch this exchange. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. And I just wrote like, they must all be so confused. So <laughs> like this must be such a bizarre. Well, you'd think they were confused, but apparently they had been lining up on opposite sides to represent where they fall in this rivalry while this was all happening. Because right now, this is when Momoa and Vin Diesel like have a big showdown. And Momoa's like, everybody on my team, do the stick your guns out like next to my arms. I like all but, and they're all right behind him. Guns fly out. Right. Which feels racist. And then Vin Diesel says the same thing. And his side is already right behind him. And all his people, Palaka. Yeah. I wanted one person to be wrong. Right? Like just the, the moishy of their gang. Like Brick. Is just on the wrong side. And he's, he's like, got oh, a grenade. Oh, uh, <laughs> Sorry. You know I, I forgot I'm on his team. They're actually talking over a car. Well, why I'm don't you both make me an offer? <laughs> <laughs> I was watching and I just Excuse thought, me. this West Side Story, they should all start dancing. Absolutely. Here's how you know that the Brazilians all had a, um, like a dress rehearsal for this moment. And that it was all, you know, prepared and that there was a seminar. Because then, <laughs> then Momoa goes, Momoa's character goes, why don't we race for it? 
And what it is, I still don't know. But I don't like, know. Couldn't why don't you. we race for it? And Dom is like, let's race. And then fireworks go and off. And fireworks yes. happen. <laughs> to be clear, here's the exact line. I'm so glad you asked what the stakes of the race are. Jason Momoa says, if you win, I'll give you my car. If you lose... And then the writer of the movie was like, I'm bored. And so Jason Momoa goes, well, <laughs> don't lose. That okay. was it. The don't end. know what the stakes were. Those are the stakes. And then there's going to be a race with four people instead of two Why? for no Why? goddamn reason. So here's the, here's what I want you to picture, podcast listener. Again, the really, really picture this. Vin Diesel comes forward in his muscle car, 11 movies in. Brown, 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 brown. We see Jason Momoa's car. Brown, 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 brown. And then those two characters, the sexy lady and the other guy who we mentioned in less than half a sentence, they pull up in their cars like, I'm in the movie now. Yeah. Yup, they were all like, we're racing also. <laughs> so stupid. And there's this great thing because because Momoa tries to do the Joker thing from Dark Knight where he's like, which ones do you save, Dom? And Dom realizes like he's going to have to choose who to save. But it's like they saw the scene from the Dark Knight with Rachel and Harvey Dent, and they were like, how do we improve this? What if he knows neither of the what people What if he knows nothing all? about these people? Right, so you Jason Momoa- You know what would have made that scene better? No personal connection <laughs> to either It turns out Jason Momoa has strapped in a bomb thing to the bottom of both of these strangers' cars. These randos' cars. So he's like, you're going to have to save one of them. And Dom is just like, mm, which one? I don't know either of them. And he does. He, he, he saves the lady, obviously. Yeah. Which, I mean, eeny, meeny, miny, mo. Am yeah, I right? absolutely. But he knocks the bomb off her car, which means guy we met zero scenes ago is dead. And Dom is very upset about it. Like, yeah. there's, I'm not kidding. There is a long pull away shot as though someone we deeply care about ca yep. died. I thought we, again, because I don't remember anything from any of these fucking films, really thought we were supposed to know. And I just didn't. You're, telling me, you're so. telling me these I were nobodies. So nobody. No, we're 100 percent sure. Well, no, we're going to learn that Isabel, the woman, is a somebody, but we don't know yet. The other guy is just the like guy who runs the racing rave. Yeah. Yes. And he's uh, the he president dies. of Brazil. Yeah. Yeah. That's fucking crazy. <laughs> Although I will say I, he kind of deserved it. He hits the Nas too early. And that's, you know, that's how you lose. Don't hit the Nas too early. You deserve to die if you're in these movies 11 times and you hit the Nas early. That's your fault. That's like if they tried to replicate the final scene from Titanic, but it was just two people who had just met on the boat on that on yeah. that panel at the it's, very last minute. It's like if Sophie's Choice had been about a woman's daughter and just another little boy. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Anyways. That's very funny. <laughs> that's, that very, scene very is funny. over. Meanwhile, back at the prison, Letty is getting laser surgery. Uh, couples laser surgery <laughs> Because is what's happening. Well, you're spoiling it. Spoiling it. Because apparently we save the most advanced medicine for our worst criminals. Yup. Are you surprised? <laughs> and as she's getting laser surgery, she looks over and who's there? <gasps> it's uh, Charlie's Theron. Oh, I spoiled that it's, 10 it's, seconds. It's, Sorry. It's, yeah. shares, <laughs> shares her wrong. Why is she in this prison? Don't know. Is she a good guy now? Don't know. Is she still a bad guy? Don't know. Unclear. All of it's unclear. I finished the movie. Still unclear. <laughs> All right. So let's see. Quick rundown of the scenes that happen next because none of them matter. Uh, Jason Momoa plays with the dead bodies of some guards. While dressed yep. like a rug rat. Yep. Okay. <laughs> Pink robe, hot or not. We need a hot or not on this. He's a rug rat. So he's literally hot. dressed like one of the rug rats. He I is. can't remember which Angelica. one. Angelica. He's, got, he's, he's dressed, dressed yeah. like the Angelica. Doll. He's got like the. He, yes, it's Angelica's doll. doll. Thank you. I couldn't Absolutely. fucking place it. He's dressed like Angelica's doll. He's got the two fucking little buns on either side of his fucking head. And it is the He's fucking. He's painting the toenails of the dead guys. Of the dead guys. And their faces are taped into smiles. Taped open. <laughs> really funny. We will never <laughs> find out why they died. We will never find out <laughs> why they he are. taped open their faces, <laughs> who they are. It's just a scene to queer code Jason Momoa's <laughs> character. unhinged. It's like they did a test audience and the loudest guy in the room was like, not enough homophobia. <laughs> <laughs> and they were like, I mean, we could add a scene where he just sort of like queerly fucks around with, queerly fucks around with bodies. <laughs> Take my $11. This has been a trend since fucking Skyfall. I feel like they just surprised Momo with this. They just like put him into a room with dead bodies and faces taped up and they were like, go, talk. It go. was and he unhinged. Did, and Improv. he kills it. 
He's so good. Isn't this like, isn't this a thing that they've been doing since fucking Skyfall though? Isn't this like what they did with Javier Bardem in that fucking movie? Queer coding villains? Yeah. I feel like this has become a much more popular thing in the past like five, six years. Time immemorial, Jason. Moshi. Time immemorial. (laughs) We said Jason like 19 times already. Yeah, what's up? Since Scar and Jafar, they've been (laughs) queer coding our villains. Scar and Jafar. Oh my God, Scar. (gasps) Scar's gay. Well, Jafar's not gay. Really? I'm, I'm going to need Jafar. I will, he tries yes. to fuck slave I Jasmine. Believe? No, no, he does not. Yeah. I'm going to need you to revisit Aladdin and watch Jafar's boa wearing No, this is the rest of the podcast now. I'm sorry. Jafar just, is not gay. Jafar's gay? Jafar's real, real queer What's coded. So give me some evidence. Uh, he wears eye makeup. <laughs> <laughs> Can we go back to the movie? Thank, really? All right. Interesting. An interesting take. <laughs> so he plays with some dead bodies. Then we check in on the sidekicks who had been gone so long that my notes for this section are, I forgot they were in the movie. Yep. They are at their new base, which appears to be an office. They rented a WeWork for that. Yep, they're there in a Very WeWork. clearly London. a WeWork. Yeah, they're in a WeWork and they learn that Jason Momoa has hacked them and taking all their money. Right. They watch the little bars go down on their computer. (laughs) Two thoughts here. Two thoughts here. (laughs) One is, wouldn't you think a hacker's money would be super duper secure? You would. That's A of all. B of all, put it in different banks. Like, are you... (laughs) Did we learn nothing from Silicon Valley? They're not Jews. Okay. Understood. Yeah. No. Well, that's where my thought process came in. It's like, what do you not have a Roth? You know what I mean? Yeah. No. Absolutely. And and can I say, (laughs) just from my heart, it is Vin Diesel's fault because he did change all of their passwords to family. <laughs> Just the word family. Just the word family. All lowercase. Yep. Hey, no. his Facebook was familia. <laughs> <laughs> but it's okay because Roman has covered his body in money. Will that ever matter to the movie? Nope. No, it will not. No, yeah. They buy some stuff later. From, from Pete, Pete Davidson. Davidson. Yeah. yeah, from Pete Davidson. And they use the cash that he strapped to his body. What the exactly. fuck is he doing in this movie? What None the fuck business. is he doing in any movie? Pete Davidson is everywhere, and I love it. His coke guy was on set, and he <laughs> was there, and Vin Diesel was like, aren't you Kanye West? And he was like, no. And he was like, you're in a movie. Anyways, <laughs> meanwhile, back in Reno... The girl, remember the girl who had a sexually inappropriate attraction to Vin Diesel? Yeah. She's going to explain that she's actually quite connected to this movie. Do you remember Fast and the Furious 5? I don't, but I know that he was in a relationship with the cop. Yep. Mm -hmm. Elena. Mm -hmm. And this girl is Elena's sister. Unspoken of, unmentioned sister. Never mentioned. So Vin is in this girl's house. So she's the kid's aunt. Yes. Okay. So Vin sees a shrine to this woman who he dumped in once and or maybe they were really dating I don't know it's not my business I don't care Jesus and he was like I knew you looked familiar and she was just like and then they they exchange cryptic words and that's it they literally just use her as a replacement for this character because Vin Diesel was like he should ask that cop lady and they were like no Vin she died and he's like bring her back to life and they were like we can't Vin we literally cannot do that and he was like sister Sister. <laughs> yes. yep, 100%. Yeah. I, at this point, my notes just say, Marvel movies ask me to keep track of less characters, and I've been reading comics since I was 13 years old. Right. To be clear, though, he saved her life because he knew by looking yeah, at her. I, he yeah, he knew. Somehow he smell she, it. she was the sister of Elena. He was like, you get to live. I've smelled a genetically time. similar vagina before. <laughs> you get to live. And the guy with the face tattoos does not. Yep. And then, again, just have to point it out, at the end of the scene, he's like, by the way, my friend Brian is alive. (laughs) That's it. (laughs) Apropos of nothing, he's just like, I have a friend named Brian. (laughs) He's alive. Are you writing something on a post-it? Yes. So is the actor who (laughs) plays Brian's alive. All right. Meanwhile, the sidekicks are in London trying to find action movie stuff at Pete Davidson's Internet Cafe. Yep, and there is a plate of muffins, and he goes, can I have these muffins? And Pete Davidson goes, those are special drug muffins. And then they all ate all Eat of them. them anyways? And yeah. A la Jason's Saran. A la Moishi <laughs> Applebottom. <laughs> Moishi Saran Jason Applebottom. <laughs> yeah, a la Moishi. They all eat the drug muffins, and it never comes back. Nope. Or manners. They're not high. They're nothing. This is also the best example of my best worst. Yeah. Roman and please tell me what that other person's Tej, name is. Ludacris. 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 Because I only know him as Ludacris. Yeah. 
Roman and Ludacris are like, I think we should have a slap fight right now. <laughs> <laughs> and they do. And like Heath and I trying to improvise during a live show, they just roll around on the ground for a little bit. <laughs> yep. And then Roman throws powder into the air as like a big mic drop thing. And everybody's like, what? What is that? And they don't address. It. And then they cut. They cut. It's just like pocket sand. Yeah, he throws pocket sand into yep. the air and he's like, it's for it's for the You movie. know what that is. What was it? Yeah, and so they want to buy military grade weapons. Correct. From Pete Davidson. Yes. And Pete's like, what's your budget, basically? Yeah. And then Roman goes, how about this? Pulls out a huge wad of cash and puts $100 bill on the counter. And Pete's like, you kidding? And I... I think it's similar to how much Eli thinks clothes cost. Correct. <laughs> if a t-shirt is more than $11, he's like, well, that's not. That's crazy. What am I going to do? You get a whole pack of those for $11. I'm looking at Eli's outfit. Yeah. Max $7. We got cargo shorts. Wow. You're really, you're highballing. Thank you. You think, you think high? No, he did get those nice new sneakers. I did. Those look great. Oh, they do tie. Yeah. tie? They tie. Not do you really. know they're, how to tie them or did you have somebody no, tie them for No, they're Kizik, so you can just they're step into them with your fat they're feet. Wow. Okay. <laughs> your you just fat step. Feet. They're literally a brand of shoe that is based on, you can just step into Guys, this is fatty. too sad for me. I can't, I can't buy I was going to get to the varicose veins that exploded along my legs, but we can get back to the movie. That is the other thing I'm looking at right now. Yep. It's a, it's when a lot. did that happen? It happens all the time <laughs> oh until, my until my heart gives out. Okay, That's but what it's, happens. it's like outside it your hurt? skin. It's like scabs. Yeah. It's not just, varicose veins are supposed to be inside your my skin. My literal right? blood is like, hey, we shouldn't have been alive this it's long. It's fluid, right? <laughs> not blood. Isn't it fluid? I don't know, man. I'm not fucking a doctor. <laughs> I went to a doctor the first time. He was like, you should be less fat. And I was like, you should be less tall. And then we walked away. Did we you both... say you went to a doctor for the first time? No, I went to the doctor the first time this happened to oh, my I legs. See. And then I was like, this isn't any of my business. Can you slide the leg behind the table just for me? Thank you. <laughs> hey, could you uh, could you leave the room? Just <laughs> <laughs> Thank God it's an audio medium. Anyways, back at prison, Charlie's the Roan and Letty are chit-chatting because future prison, as we spoiled earlier... <laughs> Is future prison. Has shared surgical rooms. Yep. They also have controls that are within hand reach of the prisoners. Yep. Because Charlize Theron immediately not only unlocks them from their prison surgery tables, but also knockout gases the scientists who are doing laser surgery on them. Yep. She's like, I set these up earlier. How? When? What is this prison? <laughs> this high tech prison that you were able to set up Gas bombs. Very confusing. You set that up and then you got yourself into the surgery by having injuries? I don't know. It's a lot. Very confusing. Just very elaborate plans. So many things in this movie turn out to have been someone's plan all along. Right. Yep. And they, they try to explain it here because they, they guess everybody and everybody's knocked out and she's like, I needed you for this. And there's just like, two handles that need to be turned at the same time. Yeah, what the hell was that? As you know, the, like those prison hospitals where you have to turn those <laughs> yeah. two things at the same like time. Like a nuclear device. Same thing. Right. And then, again, my best worst, she's like, oh, okay, great. Well, we're out of the prison. And Letty is like, um, you were a bad guy last movie. Would you like to have a fight about it? And Charlize <laughs> Theron is like, yeah, no, we can do <laughs> yeah, it. We can do a fight. And then they have like a, a very minute. sensual... It's a real... Uh, sensual this fight. This is a sexy fight. At which point the, the medicine robot fires a death laser at them and I just yep. wrote, why does the Healthatron have a death laser? <laughs> There's a button for death laser on the couple's surgery robot. This is the Healthatron 348 Max. It's for it assisted can suicide. <laughs> it can stitch cauterized suture and vaporize a horse from 50 meters away. <laughs> Sometimes you need that. What I love most about this sexy girl fight, right? Because the makers of this movie, vicious sexist that they are, were like, right. and now you guys are going to roll around. Yeah. And these two actors were yeah. like, no, we can't say no because Fast and the Furious pays us infinite amounts of money. Yeah. But we can make this the least sexy girl fight it in was, the universe. Yeah. It was pretty brutal. It's pretty brutal. They just yeah. punch each other in the face and bleed and spit teeth yep. for like, Four minutes. Yep. And then the guys behind the camera are like, still erect. And they're like, ah, we tried our best. <laughs> Meanwhile, back in Rio, I, I don't think, know. Yeah. Dead cop sister is reading the files that her dead sister had on Jason Momoa. Yep. And those files say he's a bad guy. 
<laughs> yep. <laughs> and we were supposed to be like, what? what? Yeah. The movie's catching itself up with itself. Yep. And then we learn that Jason Momoa owns a police station somewhere in town. I don't remember this at all. So Fucking there, was a, what? there was a stack of files and she's like, this is all the buildings the family what? owns. And then she's like, they've sold all of them except this one. And it's just an empty building. And Vin's like, I'm going to find the answers I need there. He's definitely yep. right there. Like, why would you assume that's, well, he's at he's, that building because he owns it? Maybe it's the last Airbnb they were able to hold on to. <laughs> like, guys, that's funny. Guys, you're missing it. It's not just any police station. It's the police station they stole the big safe out of in movie oh. five. Is it that exact one? It looks different. Yes. What? <laughs> it doesn't matter if it's that one or not. It literally doesn't matter. It's a place where they go and he gets tricked because he's Vin Diesel and he's an idiot. It's a great movie. <laughs> and the only other thing I want to mention about this scene, because it's just going to matter later, is that Jack Reacher also is aware of Vin Diesel at this point. So he's on Vin Diesel's tail as well. Yeah. And we get the scene that's literally from Jack Reacher where he just like beats up a bunch of people in Brazil. Like Vin, Vin Diesel knows he's being tailed. Oh, yeah. He literally says the Jack Reacher catchphrase. He's like, guys, you don't want to do this. And then turns to the camera like, Wink. Jack Reacher now available on Amazon yeah. Prime. And we're like, I watched it and I jerked off to you, man. It was Got a it. weird plug. <laughs> I also, did you guys notice he had like that, what looked like a shoulder holster on? He did. Yeah. Mm -hmm. If you look closely, because I, I I was wondering about I, it. I paused the movie. Theater. It's not a holster. There's no, there's no holster. <laughs> yeah, that's funny. It's just a leather like a fucking belt. Yeah, he's just got a leather belt around his shoulder the whole fucking time. Is that film. what is that the biggest problem you had with this movie? Yes. Got it. Falls apart here. Makes sense. Well, good thing everyone in Rio is family for Vin Diesel. They helped him there. They bought him a little bit of time. And uh, we're gonna need one more quick break. But first, let me give Act Three the hard sell. Will every other character from the nine other movies that we haven't met yet get involved in Act Three? Will contracts that say, I never lose a fight, make everything a weird tie for a bit longer? Mm -hmm. Will we get way more involvement from Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior? Yes, when we return <laughs> for the Nas-tastic conclusion of Fast 10. All right, everyone. Welcome to the secret evil meeting of entertainment creators. <laughs> evil <laughs> meeting. <laughs> evil <laughs> meeting. <laughs> so first off, I want to give a big shout out to Rick for his Fridging Women project, where women are only depicted as damsels in need of saving or victims to avenge. Uh, amazing work, Rick. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. That said, I think you guys are really going to like this new project we've got going. Gay villains. I'm so sorry. Did you say gay villains? Like, like sexually? Yes, implied sexually. The only way to show gay sex, as we know, is as a doorway to punishment. But we're going to make our villains gay so that they seem, you know, dangerous and powerful. Okay, but why do we want to make gay people seem dangerous and powerful? Right. Uh, so you know how most of the queer community are like wildly disenfranchised because of their differences? Sure, obviously. Right. Yeah. Right. So if you still want people to be scared of them, you have to make them seem dangerous and powerful. But if the stereotype is that queer people are effeminate, how do we make them dangerous? Great question. Great question. So the answer is we make them either sneaky or crazy or both. Or both. Got it. Yeah. Sorry. Just why are we doing this again? It just seems like a weird place to plant a flag, like with this stereotype thing. Yeah. Okay. So it's, um, it's to prove how not gay we are. I'm sorry. What now? Right. So you know how the number of gay people has gone up just like a ton in the last few decades? Sure. And that's not because people are like turning gay. It's just because people are comfortable admitting it. Yeah, because culture. Culture, right. yeah, exactly. But if you look at those numbers in reverse, you start to realize that previous generations have just literally millions of gay people living in the closet, just <laughs> barely keeping it together. <laughs> so we got to make the villains gay. Hey, man, um, are you gay? Everyone's gay, man. Literally everyone. That's true. I'm not gay. Yes, you are. Yeah, I'm a little gay. And we're back. And now John Cena and Brian Jr. are on a commercial flight heading to the secret finale spot that they all agreed to meet at. Yep. And a flight attendant hands John Cena a key to the plane. To the back of the plane? I was very confused about this whole scene. I gotta be honest. Why? What? 
<laughs> well, John Cena. So the kid's like, who was that? And he's like, don't worry. It's good to know a lot of people in high places, which like either she's a spy or what I think he was telling the he kid meant is like, high altitude. I fucked a lot of stewardesses, kid. Yeah. So he has a key to the, the back of the plane. Because everybody knows if you're friends with stewardesses, they give you the keys to the gives plane. Gives you the keys sure. to the plane. Absolutely. Absolutely. Hundo P. That's one of the perks of medallion status. Mm -hmm. So yep. they're going to go to the back of the plane and they're going to go grab his Batman mini plane rocket kayak that he kayak. apparently like ran through security and now it's in the back. Yeah. Then there's that great scene where he pretends John Cena has to talk about chemistry. <laughs> oh my God. He was like, here's the deal, kid. We got to get this thing to run. No fuel. Just a little bit of maker's mark. Combustion. Yeah. Combustion. Combustion. Yeah. Buns. yeah. I don't know, man. We're just going to drop. We're just going to see what happens. Yeah. So they drop out of the bay doors of this commercial airliner. Yep. I'm so confused. If they had their own plane, why are they on a plane? Great question. I think they needed someone to help them get the height originally. I see. It's unclear. Anyway, meanwhile, back in England, the sidekicks know another different place to get action movie stuff. <laughs> yep. Let me be clear. That is actually the plot of the movie. Is like, yep. oh, that scene with Pete Davidson was stupid. Um, <laughs> do you want to go see Jason Statham? So, wait, yep. it, so it wasn't just the drugs. You're telling me that nothing actually happened in the Pete Davidson scene. I was nothing confused happened. and thought I missed something. Nothing, nothing happened. happened. No, Pete Davidson sold him out. He didn't sell them any like action movie stuff like he was supposed to. He instead like went for the reward that's being offered on the dark web. The producer said, who is in town? What actors are in town? Who is available write, all the time? Statham. Let's write scenes for them. So there's a scene with Statham. I still don't know why. Oh, well, yeah. he's in every one of these, isn't he? He's, he's Shaw. No, yeah, yeah. he's yeah, Jason Statham is OG. He's OG. Yeah. First of all, he's not OG. He was only in it starting in movie like six. I'll say this, man. Stupid. I know they're all 68 years old, but Jason Statham it's still so fucking hot. terrifies so he's killing me. It. Dude, he's like, so hot. Yes, very hot, but legitimately still fucking scary. Like, if you fucking ran into that dude in a fucking alley, like, fuck that noise. He Let still me, fucking fights like a champ. Sure does. Can I tell you what I think is not scary about him? Mm -hmm. As he gets older, his head looks more and more like Squidward's. <laughs> yes, it does. <laughs> in each moment, that little whoop in the yep. center gets more and more severe. Here's yes. what I think happened. Because there's these two London scenes. I think they were like, Jason Statham, time for another Fast and Furious movie. And he was like, can't do it. And they were like, please, Jason Statham. And he was like, I'll tell you what, we'll do it, but only if he's in my apartment <laughs> in Rondon Town. <laughs> and they were like, yeah, no, this movie makes a billion dollars. Literally we can doesn't go matter. Anywhere you want. Look, we just bought your apartment building. We bought the entire block yep. for this one day of shoes. Yep. So they go to Jason Statham's house. Him and Han have a fight. Yeah. Because he's the one who killed Han, according to movie six. But here's the thing. Han didn't expect to be a movie star again. No. This guy was just some actor. Han is tired. In he's Han is exhausted. Is Han from make, Tokyo Drift? He's from Tokyo Drift. Thank you. Isn't that three? That's three. But yeah. he. But it's not established that Jason Statham's the one who killed him until six. But he killed him in three? Yeah. But it's established in six. Yes. But he didn't actually die. But he didn't actually but die. But he's immortal. Correct. Like everybody in the crew. So they need to have a fight now. And so we watch action star Jason Statham just like slow motion karate fight. Yeah. And it's all, it's, there's like a weird racial element to it because yeah. Han is very clearly told like, you know, martial arts. And he's like, I don't though. And yep. they're like, but that Jason the Statham knows martial arts. So you need to know martial uh -huh. arts. You know, Han punched somebody and they were like, can you uh, maybe just chop it instead? Can you do it maybe more do Asian? A, what if you made a, a little more? What, can you make a sound? And do he was like, a fight what with... kind of sound? And the guy was like, <laughs> ah, <I see. laughs> <laughs> and then Han punched that guy. The scene was over. Yeah. Oh, so good. So they have a fight for a bit. Then the bad guys show up. This was one of my favorite scenes for anonymous bad guys because it starts as agency bad guys, but yeah. then they ran out of camo outfits. So there's <laughs> two or three hitmen bad guys just being like, but I know we're wearing the wrong outfits, but we're but that's partially why I was so confused the entire movie. There's oh, so, so many good. bad guys, and it was so good. they're all just out to get Vincent Diesel. Are you texting? I, not just texting. Yep. Scrolling Instagram. Seriously? 
<laughs> scrolling, uh, in, seeking entertainment. <laughs> Do you know what would Moishi. surprise me the least? If if Moishi took a FaceTime call right now. <laughs> My Moishi, mom tell me, called me about 40 minutes ago. Tell me you were not entertained by naked guy in the bag for no reason at the end of the scene. Oh my God. Oh my God. What and was no that? Well, so I think it's a reference to the transporter. No. No. no? An homage to that other Jason Stevens. <laughs> so the post credits teaser at the end of Fast and the Furious 9 was a Jason Statham beating up that punching bag with a guy inside. Oh. So this is them. Yeah. This is them paying off that wow. bit from one movie ago. That's just good writing. Uh, yep. Withdrawn. That's what I, what I yeah. Paying off an after credit scene. Yep. 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 Gun fired. All right. So now we cut over to Dom exploring the police station that Jason Momoa owns. Yep. And Jason Momoa has apparently been watching the movie. Turns out he's a huge Fast Furious fan and has all the Blu-rays. Yeah. He has, but not just the Blu-rays, <laughs> scenes from this movie yep. yeah. on tape. It's impressive. And I can't stress this enough. It is, it's not Photoshop. They didn't use AI to try to switch the camera angle. It is just screenshots from the previous films. Like, yeah. yes. Absolutely. And so Jason Momoa, the villain here, has set up an artistic video collage on a bunch of screens in this yeah. police station just as a taunt for when Vin Diesel shows up. And then he calls him on the landline phone that he's set up in the middle of the room so they can banter. It is a love letter scrapbook of Vin Diesel and Paul Walker. Yeah. Second only to Vin Diesel's Paul Walker. Yep. Yeah. Yep. I really wanted Vin Diesel to be like, I actually have one of these, but it's about my friend Brian. He's alive. He's alive. He's all alive. <laughs> he breathe in. He breathe out. <laughs> Just like me. Honk shoe. Honk shoe. I'm sweet now. I tricked you. Peekaboo. Where'd I go? <laughs> Anyways, the cops There's show up no and they arrest Vin Diesel. Diesel has object permanence. That's <laughs> no, absolutely no, accurate. No fucking chance. But anyways, the cops show up and arrest Vin Diesel. Okay, because, hold on. Yeah. The cops show up and arrest Vin Diesel. I wrote down that this movie completely arbitrarily decides what the word caught or overpowered means. Because yes. at any given moment, based on what needs to happen, four guys might mean... I guess they got me. I got to go with them. Or a hundred guys could be like, we can fight our way out of this. We yep. just need family. <laughs> to, be, to be clear, last movie, he pulled a missile silo down on top of himself. With his hand. Yep. And Jack Reacher shows up with three guys and a baby. And he's like, I'm a Wested. Yeah. Yep. Meanwhile, <laughs> eight of the world's like stupidest cops show up to arrest Vin Diesel in this scene. He's like, I guess this is how it ends for Vinny. <laughs> <laughs> Quick check-in on the ladies. They're done fighting. Letty climbs out of the tunnel, notices that she is in... Antarctica. Antarctica. Literally Antarctica. Okay. Look, I don't want to talk about the reality of this scene. I want to talk about what you guys think Vin Diesel thinks Antarctica is. Ooh. Because <laughs> he well, definitely doesn't think it's a continent at the he, top of the world. He is, he is 100% a flat earther. I will say that. He thinks it's a dessert. Yeah. I would like a baked Antarctica. <laughs> a baked, yeah. I ordered a baked Antarctica. <laughs> I think it's. I think he thinks it's. A, I think he thinks it's his Italian aunt. Yes. I think he thinks Where's it's Antarctica. Where's my Antarctica? Oh, this is Antarctica. <laughs> <Yep>. <laughs> Anyways, she goes up. She sees Antarctica, and she's like, "I'm probably gonna need some coats." But luckily, Charlize Theron has some lovely Swiss coats, like beautiful, like Canada goose level. Coats with like a really chic matching boot. And she's like, at least with my plan, you'll be warm. Question. Yeah. Is there a high fashion element to yes. the fans of Fast and the Furious? Oh, um, I mean, I watched the movies. There you go. Yep. Asked and answered. Anyways, back with the sidekicks. They finally have action movie stuff. So Jason Statham learns that one of the targets for Jason Momoa is Helen Mirren who you may not remember is his mom. Mom, right. Yeah. Oh, oh it's right. it's Jason Statham's mom. Yeah. yeah. So, so he leaves yeah. the movie. <laughs> Literally that. Also, she comes in at the beginning of the movie for a second and then never matters again. Was she, Helen Mirren was in that movie last night that I watched? Yup. Yep. No. Yes. Are you Twice. sure? Yes. In Yeah. It, towards the beginning, she comes in and she's just like, you must kill your family, Dom. I don't know what that accent was. I apologize. Yeah. 
Do you know who Helen Mirren is? Yes. I don't know why I did that accent. Why did you do the Rena Moreno? I think I she's know. thinking of Rena Moreno. No, I'm not. She, Helen Mirren I, was in the movie. Was it's, Helen Mirren in the movie? It's a say, British accent. Yes, I'm she so was. sorry. Okay. Say 97 things about Helen Mirren right now to she's, prove you know who say she three. is. Say three. British. That's, That's one. one. She's an old white lady. Two. Two. An actress. Three. Three. Nailed it. Okay. Ah! More fool us. Meanwhile, back in the car where Vin Diesel has been arrested, Jack Reacher is going to give, I'm going to say, the worst monologue of the movie. Yeah, this is when the writers decided the movie it. had to be about something and they picked AI for four minutes. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So this movie is a total exercise in just replicating scenes from better movies worse. Right. Yes. This scene is the Tom Cruise scene from the latest Top Gun, right? Where the general where John Hamm's character is like, it's not like it used to be. Pilots have been replaced by blah, blah, blah. Oh, yeah. Except there he's having the conversation with Toretto and he's like, because these movies exist in such a stupider world, he's like, Dom, it's not like the past anymore. This isn't 2001 where a drag race can save the world, Dom. <laughs> exactly. Yes. Yeah. Yes. And it's it's also, you have to understand that the camera is switching back between Jack Reacher, who I guess is acting okay, and yeah. Vincent Diesel. Yeah. If there was an English bulldog that it kept switching back to, <laughs> it would not be more sense because he's like, you don't understand. The world has changed. And Vince Diesel is just like, <sighs> <laughs> <laughs> and like, nowadays, everything's run by computers and the villain is the villain of our minds. <laughs> <laughs> Do you need to go snackies? <laughs> <laughs> also, also, <laughs> Jack Reacher's character in this scene is written to be borderline non-functional, right? Yeah. Because the entire scene is Toretto telling him what's about to happen, right? Because, you know, Dom is like, my family's going to rescue me. So they're in the truck and Dom is, you know, Dom's arrested and he's just like, you might want to buckle up. And he's like, why? And Dom's like, I'm preparing for what's to come. And then he puts his seatbelt on, grabs the restraints and all but says, my, my family's about to, are you not getting this? The thing's about to hit the car. We're in... <laughs> I'm very clearly signaling you that a thing's about to happen. Yep. Yeah. And did you fucking knock off John Cena, fucking Jack Reacher's just like, pff, pff, pff. I mean, this fucking, am I right? I bet nothing's going to probably happen to and this car. And a missile hits the car. <laughs> yeah. But it's actually, it's not Dom's family. It's Jason Momoa. Yeah. But how did he know that Jason Momoa was going how to? How does anything, anything in this movie? Yeah. We can't ask questions. These are great questions. So they have a big shootout on the bridge. That is so boring. The only thing I will mention about this scene, there's two things I want to touch on. The first is that Vin Diesel pushes a car okay, over. I, I made a note of that. He No, no, a car was flipped and he wants to get it back on its side. So with one hand, mm -hmm. while he's basically holding an iced coffee in the other yep. hand, <laughs> just pulls a car down. Yep. <laughs> he pulls a car down and then it just like sails over and provides him cover. And then my second thing is in the final moment where like this is supposed to be the big climax and he punches Jason Momoa. Yeah. Jason Momoa stands up and goes, you butthole. <laughs> it's a great scene. <laughs> I don't know that that was supposed to be a comedic moment. It was hilarious. It was. The, of course it was. If the rest of this series is just Vin Diesel completely straight facedly trying to do action movie stuff while Jason Momoa is like, fuck you, man. <laughs> you suck. You have a head like old cement. And Vin Diesel's like, stop. You're not allowed to say it. I'm the president of the movie. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'd be here for that. But now they're all on the same team. They're all against Momoa now, right? Right. So like Momoa brought him to this bridge because that's where his dad died in the movie that he was there, but not in, in mm -hmm. five. Yep. And he wanted to like do the finale here, revenge at the same bridge. Right. Also, Brie Larson is here. Oh, yeah. In also a on there. Too. Really banging blue suit. Looking yeah. amazing. Yeah. She gets shot right away. Yep. <laughs> she steps out of a helicopter there to save Vin Diesel, gets shot by a different helicopter sniper yep. right away. Yep. Children playing with action figures have more coherence <laughs> yep. than the film at the this point. The good news is, though, is she has the cross necklace. Yes. So she has God with her. And that's why she survives. Yep. Also, Jack Reacher gets shot in this scene and the movie literally forgets. Yep. Because at the end of the scene, he just gets up and he's like, all right, we're a team now. And it's like, I thought you got shot by the no, sniper No, I thought too. he was dead. And no. then he just stands back just up stands and up. he's like, I we're shaking bacon. I thought he was dead. Mm -mm. No, he just gets right back up. All right, so John Cena. Got to respect it. And again, podcast listener, I'm with you. You're like, wait, I don't understand what's happening. Buckle in because John Cena and little baby Brian, their road trip is over. Where did it end? The missile silo 
that Vin Diesel pulled down in the last movie in Portugal. Oh. Wait, is this in Portugal? Port- the big Chiron on the screen at this point said Portugal. Okay. Dude, they get to different countries real fast. Yeah. I think maybe Vin Diesel thinks Portugal is in Brazil. Very certain of that. Yeah. So their road trip is over and Lil Brian is going to say that he loves Uncle Jacob because he wants Rachel to cry at the end of this movie. Okay. I I had a meltdown. I yeah. had a meltdown. At this point? The emotional arc of John Cena and the kid? Yeah. Brought our friend Rachel to tears. Yeah. Okay. I was having a tough day. Because she's a gentle soul. I am a gentle soul on my period. Also, there's there's a tender moment between Ludacris and Tyrese here. They cut away. Maybe yeah. it was that. Because I, I shed a tear here. Yes. Ludacris and Tyrese, yeah. they had a slap fight. They in, have a tender in, moment. In Pete Davidson's arms yeah. warehouse. And so they have a moment here where they're like, hey, I'm sorry we got into a fight. It was for the movie. <laughs> <laughs> it was the most cohesive full circle arc in 11 films. Yes. <laughs> so... Jack Reacher, let me let me explain where we are right now. Jack Reacher has flown Dom in his car to Portugal. I think it was more uh, more an airplane than a car that they flew in. Yes, but his car is in the airplane. The car yes. is in the airplane That's because great. oh, that was this because part, in this yeah. Dom's amazing car, of course, has to get used at the right. end. Right. Simultaneously to this happening, John Cena and the child. Remember how they had a rocket kayak? Yes. Yes. That rocket kayak has now been affixed to the outside of John Cena's car yes. and is now a cannon. Yep. So they have a cannon car. They have a bazooka car yeah. that they run away from the bad guys with. Right. That they use to murder copious amounts of bad guys. So many bad guys. While the child laughs with glee. Gleeful. As men burn Truly and take insane. their last He breath. participates. He fires. Oh, yes. He's like, I want a chance to end the consciousness of sentient beings. And yeah. John Cena is like, just don't tell your dad. And he's like, dad, John first Cena, sip of beer. John Cena all but turns to this kid and is just like, you ready to take another man's life, little dude? <laughs> yep, it's fun. But anyways, they drive cars for a tremendously long time. It's really boring. But at the end of it, they're cornered, which means John Cena has no choice but to do the only thing he can, which is spin his car in a circle so that his nephew goes flying out of his car and into Dom's car. Yeah. And then suicide bomb himself I don't talk to, about into the bad guy. You I'm are, sad. I love John Cena. You are missing a critical moment before yes. this. Ooh. That is, to me, yeah, are. my favorite moment in the entire film. Take me there. Which is the reason John Cena has to sacrifice himself is because his car gets hit by fucking something at some point. Right. And he turns to Don. He's the, they're driving at the same speed. He turns to Don and then he goes, my fuel line's cut. I can't make it. And Dom goes, Stay with me. And John Cena like has to like reiterate, like, I can't, like, I don't know. It's not faith, man. Like it's a few. And I realized I I so all of a sudden something occurred to me. What if, hear me out. Yes. What if Dom Toretto is actually one of those guys who pretends to know a lot about cars? Oh, I like that. Right? For, like, do you mean if, like you? Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> What if John Cena was like, my fuel line's cut, and Dom was like, just hit the carburetor. <laughs> You're going to make it, John. You got it. It's what all if, about the coaching. What if Vin Diesel's character knows fucking nothing about cars, and for the past 11 movies has just been like, you gotta, you really got to check the oil on that new Maserati. And that's why everyone applauds him when he gets there, so that they'll leave his cars alone. <laughs> That's he's funny. like, time for me to check out your tushy car. And they're like, no, man, I'm, I'm too busy clapping for you. And he's like, oh, right. That's why the car in the garage is never finished. Mm -hmm. But then he does die. But then he dies. But Rachel, I've got great news for you. Yeah. I spoke to the writers of yeah. Fast 11 through 13. Yeah. John Cena's not dead. Do you promise? I, I can't promise Look much. Look me in, in my the, eyes. I'm promise. looking at you in your art, the okay. windows to your soul. Yeah. John Cena, yeah. live another day. <laughs> okay. He's, in the, he's part of the family. It's immortal. Yeah. Okay. So this car chase, it ends at the top of a dam. Which dam? A dam. None of your business. In Portugal. Doesn't matter. But this is exactly what Jason Momoa wanted. So to be clear, I just want to go over Jason Momoa's plan. Mm -hmm. I'm going to threaten Dom Toretto. Dom Toretto is going to come to my vision board warehouse. Yep. I'm going to have him arrested <laughs> by Jack Reacher. Yep. Jack Reacher is going to fly him to Portugal, a place he already wanted to go. But before he gets there, I'm going to start to chase his son and his long lost brother with my gang of criminals. He will kill X amount of them, but they will still end up 
on top of this dam. The place they will go while I chase them is this dam. Is this dam yep. in Portugal? The setup is that is that Dom and his son are in a car and Jason Momoa has two giant trucks full of fire up yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. to come on either side of him. And he's like, what are you going to do now? And Dom's like, I've literally flown a car into space. I'm going to drive it off the edge of this fucking dam. <laughs> nope. I don't know, but probably something with my car. That's yep. probably what I'll do. He li- no, actually, the line was, the one thing you forgot to take away from me, my vehicle. <laughs> no, my, I, 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 that made me so sad because I knew that there were men in the audience watching this movie being like, I'm the same way. I'm the same way. Yep. You leave me my car, I can do anything. You leave me my car, I'm going to do meth in the backseat of it. <laughs> That's just how I am. That's what I told the cops. They said, you can't do crack at Walmart. And I said, but you left me my car. Yeah. You left me my car. And then I drove through the front window and now I'm in jail <laughs> watching Fast 10. The best part of that fucking scene with Momoa, though, is that Momoa's like, Momoa's like, I've got you. You think that you've beat me. I've got you right where I like. You're exactly where I intended you to be, which is after he kidnapped Dom's son then lost Dom's son as Dom got his son to jump yep. out of his car into his through the open door using nothing but centrifugal force. Yep. All of which was part of Momoa's master plan. Yeah. <laughs> so they get to the bottom of the dam and Momoa's like, ha. Sorry, no, to be clear, you're skipping how this happened. And the answer is Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Oh my God, did we forget the fucking cross scene? Yeah. The kid is like, dad, here's what you got to do. Family. Jesus Christ, faith, look at the cross, Jesus Christ. And then he <laughs> jumps off the dam bridge. They drive off the dam. Yep. Flies through the air, mm-hmm. steering while he's flying <laughs> through the air. He's well, steering yeah, the steering wheel. Of course. Yeah, yeah, obviously. How else does he know where he's going? He steers himself in free fall onto the side of the vertical side of the dam and hits the Nas so that he goes on. He's driving vertically down it. Yes. And then there's a very ornate, Curly Q area at the bottom that he can drive back thing. up again. Yeah, that yeah. ramps that him what up, happened? Mm-hmm. and yeah. he shoots into the water safely because of Jesus. I thought because because the CGI was so bad in that scene, it was so bad. I thought what had happened. I'm going to tell you my version of events. Take us there. I thought what had happened is that they were driving down the dam, and then because the force is so great, Dom's necklace broke. The crucifix on his neck broke mm-hmm. and went through the like the air vent. <laughs> You should do drugs less often. I thought it went through the... So because there's like this weird CGI shot where it's like you follow the the, the cross on his necklace, right? Yes. And I thought it went through the air vent into the engine and supercharged the... I thought the cross had somehow... Oh, Jesus is the Nas. You thought the cross was the Nas. Nas. Cool. Seriously, Moishi, this makes... This pulls together the entire film franchise. The Nas solves everything. Jesus is the Nas. I think that's right. Guys, I'm buying crossesthenos.com. Nas is the Christ figure. We're going to sell crosses the you Nas. You own too many websites. T-shirts. We're going to sell crosses the Nas board Nitrous shorts. Nitrous Christ. This is the Nitrous new Nitrous Christ. This is the new Jesus didn't tap. You know how Christ, that Power Christ Ranger Christ. You know how that Power Ranger killed himself? We're taking hey, up his mantle watch and his legacy <laughs> with crossesthenos.com. <laughs> Jesus didn't nos. <laughs> Jesus didn't nos. No, crossesthenos.com. Crosses I love nos. that you're still working, though, creatively. I appreciate that. <laughs> Anyways, the dam blows up. The end? Literally the end. So to be clear, Momoa rigged the whole dam to explode also earlier. Yes, he put many bombs along the dam. Now, I want to be super clear. Eli, I need you to promise me something else because mm-hmm. that otherwise I'm going to be sad. Do you promise Dom and his son made it through that gigantic explosion? 100%. There are okay. two more movies minimum. But they, w- they wouldn't do it without them, right? <laughs> without Vin Diesel? <laughs> yeah. Without Vinifer Diesel? <laughs> yeah, do Listen, you promise? Paul Walker is alive. So are these people in this movie. Absolutely. <laughs> Vinegar Diesel would never <laughs> let anything happen to his family. To his family? Are you crazy? Even when one of his family died in real life? <laughs> They're still, still alive, alive in the movie. No, they wouldn't. Oh, also, we should point out all the sidekicks, their plane crashed, but even the movie didn't pretend they're dead. They were like, don't worry, they'll be fine. <laughs> you promise? <laughs> yes. And you know how I know? Well, because Gal Gadot picks up yes. Charlize Theron oh, right. and Letty in a submarine. In a nuclear submarine. Was she in one of the movies? I forgot yeah. that they were saved oh. at the end of this movie by the Israeli army. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's a weird one so, to walk away here's from. Here's my question about that scene, by the way. What what was their plan? Because Walk from Antarctica. Whose plan? To, 
It reminded me of the scene in Aladdin, not to bring it back to Aladdin, but it re- reminded me of the scene in Aladdin where Jafar throws Aladdin and he just takes the carpet and just immediately zooms back to, to Agrabah. Yeah. Yeah. Like, what were that? Was that the plan? They were just going to walk in their no, fucking. No, the plan was that Gal Gadot was going to pick them up. They, they knew that yeah. was going I to happen. I think Charlize knew that because Sy- Gal, yeah, Gal, Gal Gadot shows up in this like giant submarine thing that emerges from the ice and she turns to Letty and she's like, Leave me now that I have a good plan, girlfriend. How do yep. they know each other? The last movie. None of your business. They Gal did the Gadot. Imagine video during the pandemic. Ah, they did, they did the Imagine video it. together. <laughs> yep. And they both hate Tom Hardy. Okay, so that was the end of the movie. Gal Gadot with a nuclear submarine picked them up in Antarctica. Yep. Yep. And then I'm hoping there's going to be some kind of like fast car thing with a nuclear submarine in the next movie somehow. Well, there was one in seven, so maybe they'll bring it back. Yeah, they I remember all this. Yeah, they did it. All, but there's one more thing we have to talk about. <gasps> it's very important. Did you watch the post credits? Yeah. Of course. There I was a post credits? I literally watched it to make sure nobody had actually died. Mm-hmm. Tell me, if, tell me about Ill. it. Tell me the post credit. The most important thing in the post credits is that somebody's back. Eli, would you like to say who's back? Who will be back for movie 12? My the crush. Rock, Dwayne. Johnson. Dwayne the Rock Johnson. <laughs> Dwayne the Rock Johnson, everybody. I love him. <laughs> will Coming he be back. will he be back for 12? I thought he was just gonna be in a, in a new hot that they were gonna do Hobbs and Shaw too. Oh, they're gonna do that too. He appeared in the end credits, and that's all that matters. But he will be back in Fast Eleven and probably more Hobbs and Shaw, if I had to guess. He had a feud going with Vin Diesel for like four movies in a row now, so that yeah. they weren't together. I guess they buried the hatchet and now he's coming back. I think it's bullshit. You think it's like constructed? I think that's totally made up. I think it's constructed. You don't think so? I don't think it's it's good for the brand. I don't know yeah. why they would do it. Why it's would they do that for if for it's not real? Nah. Reconciliation. You no. think it's they're, KFAB? They're pretending one of the guys isn't dead. Like they don't, this is not a brand <laughs> built on conflict. <laughs> yeah, no. This movie, these movies all end with a barbecue. That's true. Except this one. And that's why I left feeling so sad because I... I, okay. I didn't have the barbecue ending. But here's the good news. I agree, yeah. Rachel. Yeah. Eventually, three movies from now, because this conclusion will be three movies, mm-hmm. there will be a barbecue. You promise? 100%. And you know who will if be not, there? If not, can we have a barbecue? Everyone. We're having a barbecue. Okay. All right. Before we close it, before we close it, I want to ask you a question, what you think is about to happen. So they have to escalate from there for two more movies. They already did Fast Cars in Outer Space. They've done Nuclear Submarines in Antarctica. Where do they go in the next one? So I have one in mind and I didn't write it down because I'm so proud of it. I didn't want um, Jason to steal it, Moishi to steal it. I think it's going to go the opposite direction. Not big, but small. A la the magic school bus. A la Osmosis Jones. I think they're going to go inside a human body with a car and swim around in the varicose veins. Rachel, (laughs) mind blown. This is Thank amazing. You. Thank okay. you. So yes. I think. Thank you. I actually don't think they're going to go inside a person with a car. I think they're going to become the cars. Ooh. Ooh. I think it's going to be like a huge, like, like, like the movie sort Cars. Of, like sort like of Transformers Wal- you ever see Walrus. No. Yes. You ever see Kevin, Kevin Smith's Walrus yeah. meets Tuskers. Cars, right? Yeah. Like Ludacris gets turned into a car and yeah. then Vin <laughs> Diesel goes inside him. Yeah, it's the Transformers. Three, yeah. It's like a three- movie series where we slowly realize that the entire 11 movie series of Fast and the Furious has been a prequel to Cars. To Disney's Cars. Yes. Ooh, okay. That's where I'm at. That's where, that's where I'm that's at. Where I like well. that. That's where she's right. at. Those are two great options. I'm going to take the easy one. Take I'm going to say the next three movies are just the movie Bridesmaids. Okay. <laughs> word for word. Yep. Line for line. But with Vin Diesel. But with Vin Diesel. With Vin Absolutely. Diesel. As all the characters. Playing all the parts. <laughs> yeah. In different ways. Every single one. In, in like an Eddie Murphy situation. Yeah. Eddie Murphy style. Cool, cool, cool. Yep. All right. All right. Love it. I think we've given them a lot to work with. That's going to do it for Fast 10. But that's not going to do it for the episode just yet. Because we found another terrible movie for next week. Although I shouldn't say another because that was amazing. Eli, what's on deck? Well, he. After the highs of this high, there's only one man that can ease us back down from pure ecstasy. I'm talking, of course, about the banana man himself, Ray Comfort. (laughs) We'll be watching (laughs) Evolution versus God. Great. All right. With that to look forward to, we're going to wrap it up. Huge thanks to Rachel and Moishi for joining us. Thanks for being on, watching this movie on preview night. Awesome. Would you like to announce anything you're doing in your lives? 
Y'all do a bunch of magic around New York City. Anything like I'll that? I'll be performing at the McKittrick Hotel for Speakeasy Magic. Uh, you can find information about that on my website, as well as the Slipper Room. And I'll also be frequently crying in Eli's living room as I write my own <laughs> show. So you can catch me there on Zoom as well, weeping into his pug. Excellent. I will be performing also at the McKittrick Hotel fairly regularly. You can when find that online the on the same link. And yeah, he's really busy. I uh, <laughs> And I also perform uh, regularly at the Soho House, so you can find that on my website as well. Fantastic. And of course, a big thanks to our Patreon donors for all the generosity. If you'd like to help support the show, you can make a per-episode donation at patreon.com slash godawful. That'll get you early access to an ad-free version of every episode. And if you enjoyed this show, be sure to check out our sibling shows, The Scathing Atheist, Citation Needed, Skeptocrat, and D&D Minus. If you have questions, comments, or cinematic suggestions, you can email godawfulmovies at gmail.com. Our theme song was written and performed by Ryan Slotnick of Evil Giraffes on Mars. All other music was written and performed by our audio engineer, Morgan Clark, and was used with permission. Thanks again for giving us a chunk of your life this week. For Rachel, Moishi, and Eli, I'm Heath. Promise to work hard, turn another chunk next week. Until then, we'll leave you with the Animal House close. Chat GPT went on to write every future movie starring Vin Diesel. <laughs> this franchise already has over $6 billion in total box office. None of the people who died in this movie stayed dead, except for that guy in the race. He's probably still dead. 40 years from now, Paul Walker is still in these movies, CGI'd over the face of his great great grand niece. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, act two, right? Yeah. I'm very excited. He's going to do an outro. Oh, I'm so sorry. I just got really <laughs> excited about the next scene. I apologize. <laughs> I'm done talking about that one. <laughs> in case anyone's interested. Do you, hey, Heath, can we cut the interstitial there where, where Rachel just goes, <laughs> act two now? <laughs> <laughs> and then we'll just go into the ads. I think that's yeah, great. I think it's good. That works. Mix it up. <laughs> Jason, <laughs> stop texting. <laughs> He's looking at the fucking nuts. <laughs> okay. I was thinking about texting. <laughs> I was thinking about text you. <laughs> How hey, you doing? <laughs> how's the record going? I've been sending Eli memes this entire this time. This entire time. That makes sense. All right. Jason's taking a FaceTime I'm call. not taking a FaceTime. I just thought it was funny that my phone did ring with a FaceTime after you said that. But I didn't take it. We should keep going. I just I want to announce call. that I didn't interrupt <laughs> the flow of this with this call that I could have taken. Hey, Tr Jason, if you're bored, you can make jokes about this movie with us. <laughs> I've got it. You can, but you can make them. That's, That's how, how you can keep go. yourself entertained. <laughs> Three, two, one, go. All right. The preceding podcast was a production of Puzzle and a Thunderstorm, LLC. Copyright 2023. All rights reserved.